guys and girls, and welcome to episode 176 of the F Reality Podcast. Strap yourselves in and get ready for liftoff as we discuss this week's top VR news. We're going to be giving you some updates on the Oculus Quest, which we gleaned from the latest Facebook earnings call. We take some guesses as to what the next VR game from id Software could be, along with discussing Valve's plans for a brain interface in their next VR headset. We're also going to be talking to Rosie Summers about her incredible VR artwork and Tilt Brush going open source. And to round up the show, Zim has got some new releases for you to look forward to next week. But for now, let me introduce you to the team and find out what's been their highlight of the week this week. And also let us know what you played in the chat so we can read out some of your highlights too. First up to the plate, this guy's a great source of fiber and potassium. He's bright yellow and incredibly appealing. <laughs> it's the VR Banana Man, the one and only ZimTok5. How are you doing? <laughs> I don't know where you're going with that. And the appealing was lovely. Yeah, I kind of mocked this as if I was going to be wearing a banana suit. In the end, I just had to wear two bananas. It was all right. It was fine. No one got injured. Uh, thanks, Mike. I'm doing great. Um, it's been a good week. Nice, lively week. I think the first weeks, three weeks of January really killed my soul. And finally, I get to see it coming back. So I've been having fun in VR again and enjoying my life, uh, which is good. It's 2021. You know, some people aren't having so much fun, I'm sure. And um uh, today I spent uh, a good chunk of my afternoon, uh, and my highlight is going to be about um, one of Nathie's favorites. Mike is also uh, an addict to this particular variant of cocaine, uh, which is Walkabout Mini Golf. Um, mm. So Walkabout had a recent update, and I'm going to tell you about this because it's uh, it's a it's a fun one. First off, there was a there was an update hmm, about a month and a half ago where you could join mid match. That used to be a problem. So if you hosted a custom match. You couldn't join in the middle of a game, or if you had to go to the bathroom, quick break or whatever, you'd walk out of the scene, you'd come back, you'd find, oh no, I'm nine holes in, and I've lost my match. That was annoying. So it saves your status. If you leave, you can join matches in the middle. So that's cool. Mm. The new most annoying thing, and I'm sure the next time I play with Nathy, he's going to abuse this, is the replay feature. So you can have a ghost of yourself putting after you've taken a shot, and you can watch yourself from third person... But the thing oh. is, when you trigger this camera, everyone else sees you, and there's no distinction between that and you when you're really there. So it gets fucking oh, confusing, and you're there teetering away, like, ha ha, hiding behind a bush, and they don't even realize it's not you and, as a recording. You trigger this on a button. So that's fun. Nathie's troll mode. Oh, it's yeah. totally Nathie's <laughs> troll mode. And then yeah. the third thing, which you guys should care about, so if you've been, like me, hardcore, you know, mini-golfing for the last couple of months, and you've wanted a little bit more... Well, these uh, the Coconut Studio, I know that's not their real name, but I'm going to call it that. <laughs> Coconut Studio have come out with a with a cool new feature called Fox Hunt. So Fox Hunt is like um, a string of clues and mysteries. So it's really like if the finding the various ball types before was like an Easter egg hunt. This is like some kind of clue-led mystery game it's really cool so every that sounds awesome this is really really neat and I'll, I'll i'll show a video of this it releases at the end i'll save it for later when more people are watching but just to give you the kind of highlight the way it works is you start off and there's you know now michael know this uh christmas crackers in the uk are a big deal most americans don't have a fucking clue what a christmas cracker is it looks like some kind of small amount of explosive tnt that could be candy you find one of these uh, you open it, you pick it up just like you do the normal ball, and then you get your first clue on your wrist. And it reads out, or sometimes it's an image, sometimes it's a puzzle, and it points you to somewhere else in the map. And you have to go find it. And then when you find it, you lead on to the next clue, and on and on you go. So, for example, uh, me, my wife, and my daughter went into Original Gothic. Now, these, the fox hunt is not there in the easy mode. You have to unlock the hard course, which means you have to at least find 10 balls in the easy course, or get under par to unlock the night mode, the hard mode. And then in right. the hard mode, you get the fox hunt. And and the cool thing you get for this, if you get through it, so we went through 13 clues that were increasingly difficult. And if you beat it, you get a custom club. And the custom Ooh. club you get on this, this kind of gothic church level looks like this giant, this like iron grill, twisted metal club. It's fucking awesome. Nice. It's called the Iron Matron. You can unlock five separate individual clubs. I don't know what the other ones look like. I'm saving my surprise. And even if you just play the normal game, they've added six colored clubs. Uh, and when you get into a custom match with other people, you can see them. You can see your colored clubs. Uh, okay. So they've really done 
justice in adding value to that game. Walk about many. So the, the question I have is like like the uh, snowflakes in Population One that drove everyone insane because that was it changed the focus of the game. Yeah. Does this fox hunt change the focus of the game? Like, is are people more worried then about the clues than they are playing actual golf? Yeah, I I. Th- I think the way I think the way that you're going to end up is because this is very much an end game add on like you have okay. to have beaten it on easy. You'll okay. probably be struggling because the levels are difficult on hard. So I'd say mm-hmm. this kind of nestles in the middle of that sandwich is like not it is going to distract you. It's going to distract you. and You're going to want to go tinker off because it doesn't go hole by hole. So the clue might go from hole one to hole 14 mm-hmm. back to hole three, that type of yeah. thing. It just uses the whole level. Um, so my suggestion would be use it as like a breather between golf rounds and be like, you know, we're going to go and do this. It'll probably take you about an hour to be one, but, uh, it's totally cool. The clubs are awesome and it feels, it's a really nice thing to do as a group. So yeah, my recommendation for the week is definitely walk about me. Yeah. I remember when you originally spoke about it and I was just like, what? Why is he talking about this mini golf game? And then like me and Nathie jumped in and it, it was really, really good. And I've been playing it ever since with like family and friends. So yeah, highly recommend walk about mini golf. Yeah. Good uh, recommendation there. So next up, this guy's a swinger who loves to grapple in the arena. Once he's got you in his sights, you'll be totally hooked. Everyone say howdy to Rowdy. How you doing, dude? I'm, I'm doing great. I, w- I was kind of wondering, where is this going when you said the word swinger? swinger. I was like, okay, Mike, uh, I told you that I'm <laughs> private. Please don't like uh, start discussing that with anyone else. <laughs> but anyway, uh, no, I've, I've been doing great. Indeed, like uh, I think the highlight of my week, I had to choose between two highlights because I've had a very busy week and I haven't had the chance really to to dive into VR that much. But the, the time that I did manage to dive into VR was, uh, well, it was on Sunday, actually. It was after a podcast with Lonely Viper, me, him, and Chris, uh, we actually jumped into a game of Onward and uh, we managed to uh, uh, take a few rounds there and it was a lot of fun, but I think the highlight was still like the gravel tournament uh, game that we played together. Uh, not because I was particularly good in it. <laughs> I, I mainly died, but I have to say like I had so much fun uh, playing in that game. Uh, again, like it's with like people that you know, so it's already hilarious. Uh, Zim did a great job in organizing that. and. I think it was just a lot of fun. And, you know, we talked about it in the previous show, so I won't go too much into detail. Uh, I will probably be trying it out uh, tomorrow as well with uh, with Viper again, um, just to like uh, to, to get a little bit more experience into that game. Uh, but it's just a lot of fun. That game is like, yeah. it's, it's very low entry. Uh, you don't need a lot of like hard skills to, to play the game. Although there's a lot of skills that you can develop because there's so much going on with like the grappling. You need to master that kind of tool. It's, it's an easy game to, to get into, but a hard game to master, I would say. Yeah, I would agree with you, yeah, you there as well. And like, it was my highlight of the week as well, actually. Um, okay. And like you said, you know, uh, me, Zim and Rowdy kind of jumped in uh, on Sunday. And this was all after Viper started talking about it, right? He was the one that kind of got us into it. He was singing its praises. So we all jumped in and checked it out. The devs provided us keys which you know we're very grateful for um but like you say it's got this like really nice clean aesthetic to it as well like this kind of like cell shaded art style which i think is mm. really really nice uh, and it's kind of like a mix between like unreal tournament shooting and like the swinging in winlands like kind of combined yeah. um it's got a few different game modes like uh, six six player free for all uh, 3v3 team deathmatch and then you've got like a domination mode as well and, and the uh, awesome wait. way is that the way that you need to vote for the games right exactly you need yeah. to shoot on the level that you want and the more times you shoot the more likely it is that the, the game is going to get selected so it isn't like a a one-time select i want this mode no mm-hmm. you need to like keep on <laughs> open to trolls <laughs> troll abuse oh it's it's so open to troll abuse and I, I so hope that they bring this game to uh to quest because it's so yeah that game will explode on that platform i think yeah it's kind of weird because like it, it, it launched on steam back in november and it's kind of only hit our radar now and i don't know whether we've just been living under a rock or i don't know it just didn't happen um but uh but yeah i spoke to the devs actually and i, I sort of told them that you know i really like the game and that um, i was hoping that they're going to bring it to quest and they did say that they're, they're planning to bring it to quest soon mm, right. uh that's like one of their priorities right now and it's going to have cross-platform play with pc players as well oh, that'd be fantastic. um so yeah, and if you're interested in grapple tournament, and I, I would, if you if you've got a PC VR headset, then I'd highly recommend you go check it out on Steam. There is actually a free demo, so you can just go and check out the game's mechanics and yeah. see, uh, you know, kind of get a feel for it for free. So I think really that the demo idea. is the right way to go right now. Um, the reason I say that, I've tried to hop in two other times during the week. Um, their servers are a bit unstable and sometimes unavailable, so you couldn't even get a multiplayer match going, and also. They don't really have much of a player base right now. So unless you have yeah. people to organize with or you're going to hop on their Discord or something, 
I have to say, the game is fantastic. Viper's recommendation was solid. It's super fun. It really feels like Unreal Tournament in terms of the vibes of the weapons. The only letdown for me was the pulse rifle, which lets out like uh, your secondary fire. And the secondary fire, the way it works with the guns, with the triggers, are just amazing. Really smart. Really smart, yeah. Um, But that should go out. You should be able to shoot that and then make a bigger explosion. So devs, if you're listening, please See, this is where I completely failed at this game. Like I didn't realize about the like 45 minutes into the game that there was like secondary fire mode. So I've just been like pulling the trigger with everything I saw that move. Uh, So yeah. And I think that's the thing, you've got to really balance it out. Like, you could roll, like, my favorite was to use the grappling hook with one hand and then have the magnum in the other hand, so you could, like, kind of do both at the same time. Or you could, like, use one of the bigger, heavier weapons, but you have to hold it two-handed to get the best out of it. So there's a real trade-off there in terms of the it, way you it, play. It, it sounds it sounds very familiar to, uh, like, Skyfront back in the days. Yep. yep. It's more uh, fun than Skyfront, but, but though. Skyfront was too... The maps are also better, I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, and also, another thing is that... Um, like like the game modes itself, like the different game modes itself are quite fun. Um, hmm. And I, I think that the, just the game itself has a lot of potential if indeed they manage to get like more players in there. It might be interesting if they, they introduce like doing like some free weekends once in a while to get like people more aware of this kind of game um, and especially bring it to Quest. I mean, if they manage to bring it to Quest and I think all problems will be solved anyway. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think the only issues we had was the matchmaking. Um, but other than that, really cool experience. So go and check out Grapple Tournament. The demo is available on Steam right now. Yeah. Uh, solid recommendation there. So uh, next up, this VR addict has been away at VR rehab for the past couple of weeks, but he's now back on track and fully recharged. It's our favorite Frisian. It's of course Nathy. How you doing, dude? You all right? Yeah. Did, did I miss much or? Uh... Yeah, you missed a few things. Yeah. You know. How, how would you yeah. sum it up? Like, I'm sure Zim is very good at summing things up. Like, very short. Very very short. Well, you should um... go listen to the other two podcasts, oh, and yeah. then you'll be, catch, you'll be all caught up, Nathy. Yeah. I think uh, <laughs> I'll sum it up in this. Um, Tip Man wasn't as good as we thought it might be. Okay. True. Mm-hmm. And also... And uh, go on release on Quest. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. go on release on Quest. And Viper had to go to the toilet mid-podcast. He <laughs> needed to go to the, to the toilet wow. real bad and was crying almost on the chat to yeah. Rowdy. But... No, he didn't only cry in the chat. He messaged me on four different platforms. Yeah, <laughs> it was urgent. But... He did a good job. I didn't notice. I just, I just he, saw him duck off for a he, second. He didn't soil his suit, which was... Good to know. Okay. But how do you feel anyway? How was your holiday? Do you feel do you feel yeah. better now? Yeah, no, great. Uh, I didn't touch VR at all. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I first was like, mm, like I packed my quest. I was like, nah, nah. let's not do that. Let's not nah. let's not bring it. Um, but uh, no, it was amazing. I uh, had a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, as you said, like uh, it sounds like I didn't miss much. So that's great because it's hard to uh, take time off usually um, because yeah. there's always something going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, January is like usually in January, like last year, January, I was in China. Um, so, of course, now I couldn't go to China. So instead, yep. I just stayed in my own country. <laughs> yeah, what did you do? Where uh, did you get up to? Uh, I heard something um, about seaweed. I need to know more. Yeah. So so I, I just went to to another state, uh, like uh, close to the shore, the seaside. Um, and uh, I just, you know, biked around a little bit. Um, did some sightseeing, um, just like the simple stuff, watching mm-hmm. some TV. Ah. Any any like any hobbies sleep. that like you wish you uh, would be reincorporating into your your normal you know business as usual life now? Then things that you've like remembered that paperbacks exist or anything else like that? Um, nah, like not 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 so much. But um, I. Um, you guys apparently want to talk about seaweed sure yeah please tell we me. can do that tell we us. can go into that um so um the last day of my holiday i decided to, to just go for a beach walk at night because it was for like full moon i thought like this is it and um i just didn't notice that on the side there was a lot of seaweed so it's very slippery so i fell <laughs> and i didn't like i didn't break anything luckily um but i thought i thought this story was going to go entirely different when i heard the word like seaweed and a different town in holland oh yeah <laughs> oh right well, of course yeah <laughs> well i mean uh, i've never tried to smoke seaweed before but uh well you can always try for science right <laughs> um but uh so so uh um, so i fell and then i came back to my bungalow and then i check my pants and there was like seaweed in my pants and there was seaweed <laughs> under my watch and there was seaweed 
freaking everywhere. It, it, it almost felt like I fell into the sea instead of just some seaweed. Um, but um, nice. yeah, that, that's kind of the story. Stay indoors, Nathan. It's, it's dangerous the out idea. there. Yeah, so I still smell like yeah. seaweed today. So this is why we don't let you out very often because there's no, stuff because like this I, I, I do dangerous things like <laughs> walk on the beach and then almost yeah. killing myself. Well, it's good to have you back anyway, at least yeah, in same. one piece. So yeah, same here. It glad was you like had a nice weird. holiday. It's like weird. I, you know, it's Saturday. You're like, mm, I'm not a part of the show. <laughs> and uh, just said, I'm going to watch TV <laughs> instead and try to forget about that. I was a part of this podcast. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Well, good to have you back on the show anyway, yeah. dude. Yeah, same. So we have a special guest joining us this week. She's breaking boundaries in the art world and showing us the true magic of creating beautiful artwork in virtual reality. It's Rosie Summers. Thank you for joining us this week. Thank you so much. Thank you for the intro. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> How you been? I'm good. No, really good. It's um, been one hell of a week for me, that's for sure. Um, Mm -hmm. Not much VR playing as such, more just figuring out what to do now Tiltbush is open source, lots of um, lots of creative possibilities, lots of excitement. So that has taken up the majority yeah. of my week, that's mm. for sure. Nice. And we're going to be talking more about, obviously, uh, Tiltbrush yes. becoming open source and what that means uh, for creators like Rosie uh, moving yeah. forward. So definitely looking forward to getting into that. So, uh, yeah, but yeah. thank you again for joining us on the show this week. No, uh, it's going to be interesting to get your thoughts on some of the, the topics that we're going to be talking about. Absolutely. So uh, before we get into the news this week, then, uh, should we read out what the chat have been up to this week? Mm. Yeah. Any highlights? I, I was hoping for you to say, like, uh, like I'm going to go and... Uh play a tilt brush live and i'm gonna show you how how to draw stickman because that's all i uh, know how to <laughs> how to draw <laughs> that is all i can do literally. yeah but uh okay, that's what you're gonna we'll, get we'll save for next time yeah. uh yeah <laughs> so the chat yes the chat um so we have david uh, dawson who played alien isolation through virtual desktop we have Burrito, who played Synth Riders, the demo, because there is a demo that you can try. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he also said he wants to try Side Sketch. I don't know, Rosie, if you know what Side, Ooh, side yeah, Sketch is. Yeah, absolutely. That's Side Quest's like, um, version of Tiltbrush. Mm. Nice. Is that is that new from this week then? It since is, the open yeah. Source? So wow. within hours of the news, there was stuff Ooh. like this coming out. New That's apps, insane. New brushes. Fresh. Really exciting. This is awesome. Right yeah. here. Uh, then we have uh, Dave the Psycho, who finished uh, Medal of Honor, finished Warhammer, played Jupiter Grat, Gorn, mm. React, and Bowman. Bowman is also something new that just popped up on SideQuest, yeah. I saw. Yeah. Um, like, uh, I'm, I'm totally, like, down for a good, like, bow and arrow game. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, so we'll see, maybe that's any good. Uh, then we have uh, uh, Odin, who played Fuji, uh, Form. Uh, also, uh, let me check. Twilight Path, Visionarium, Boozluza. Wow, I don't classics, know what that means. Classic puzzlers. Uh, yeah, 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 like Booz, Booz, Boozluza. Boozluza. Is that a VR game? What, what do you think it is? What, what, like, any guesses? I'm just going to guess an adult VR game because <laughs> I have no idea. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure he's going to let us know. Um, I think Nate just Germanified like the name. Like, yeah, I'm sure I completely, like completely uh, differently ruined it. Um, and then he also tried uh, Westworld Awakening. Um, and, and the reason why he played so much is because he just got Fuck. a 3080. Oh, nice. PC Master Race, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Uh, I also want to give a quick shout out to Mad Wookie and Jeffrey Goldman uh, Goodman for the super chats. You know, Jeff, Jeff, like super chats every week. We oh we God. never say thank you. So uh, I just want to say a quick thank you to those that do support us through the super chat. We really, really appreciate it. Um, so now let's uh, actually no. Before we get into the news, I've got to thank our sponsor, of course, uh, and that is <laughs> Synth Riders. They've been supporting us the past few weeks on the show, and we really, really appreciate that as well. So uh, just to let you know, Synth Riders have recently released their latest Synthwave Essentials Pack 2, which contains some awesome tracks from the likes of Muse and Gunship. You can play these tracks solo or ride the rails with friends in the excellent online multiplayer mode. And to celebrate our partnership with Synth Riders, they're going to be kindly giving away four keys to the game and four T-shirts mm. to our audience. And all you need to do to enter the giveaway is check out the post on the F Reality Twitter page, which is at F Reality Crew on Twitter, mm. and retweet it. That's all you need to do, and you'll be entered into the giveaway, oh, and we'll it. announce the winners on next week's show. 
easy peasy. Yeah, that's the way you guys do look more, more slim and healthy. Is this because of synth riders or? A hundred percent. I can a hundred percent attribute that to synth riders. We're slim and healthy. Uh, Nathan knows that. Nathan knows how to come back from a holiday. You come back and just <laughs> gratuity and and all these like positives. I got to say one thing about synth riders. This is funny. I was going mm -hmm. back. You know, on occasion, any, any creator will will have a backlog of keys in their email or whatever. And I found one from the synth riders team back in. Um, back in like April last year. And I was just like, oh, this is funny. This is like when COVID was just getting bad. Um, but I found a, a key to the game and I was like, oh, you know what? I've already got it. So I'll give this to my dad. So I gave it to my dad. And within an hour later, he comes back. He's like, he does three, three lines. He's like, well, that's bloody addictive. And it was like, it's funny because he's never played anything like Beat Saber or anything. So that was literally his first music rhythm game. And uh, we're going to play next Wednesday. So I look forward nice. to that. Thanks, mm -hmm. team. But if you want to check out that addictive gameplay yourself, you can check out Synth Riders, which is available on Steam, Oculus Rift, and Oculus Quest. Links are in the description down below. Yep. Uh, so let's get into the news then, because we've got plenty to talk about this week. We've got some interesting topics as well. And the first bit of news comes from Oculus, as Facebook had their 2020 Q4 earnings call this week. Uh, this is where they have this regular meeting, and they talk about updates from the company. And Mark Zuckerberg talked about the company's progress and also gave us some insights into the Oculus Quest platform and how it's performing. And he stated that he's most excited about the work that they're currently doing with Facebook Reality Labs to create what they call the next computing platform. And this is what he said. He said, uh, we launched Quest 2 in October and it's on track to be the first mainstream virtual reality headset. I think that Facebook has done more than any other company to bring uh, virtual reality to the mainstream. It's been great to see so many people embrace this, especially this year during the pandemic. We're seeing people use it to play games with friends when they can't be together in person, to do workouts in their living room, or to meet with colleagues whilst working from home. There are a lot of reasons why the Quest 2 was one of the hot holiday gifts this year. Right now, more than 60 Oculus developers are generating revenue in the millions. That's nearly twice as many as a few months ago. In previous quarters, I've talked about our long-term future goals when it comes to virtual reality, but I think this quarter's results show that the future is here now. Um, which is pretty cool. Uh, he also went on to to say that the goal is to continue shipping our uh, content and titles, working with developers and shipping new capabilities to the device. And he kind of like talked about how they they kind of developed the hand tracking mode uh, for Quest and Quest 2, which was like a kind of a mode that no one ever thought would be possible on that device, uh, which is kind of cool. And he says that they're continuing to work on new hardware as well, and that the new hardware will kind of fit the same platform, so expected to be another Quest. Uh, so the content that works on Quest 2 should be forward compatible. And so that way we're going to build one kind of larger installed base around the virtual reality headsets that we have. So he's kind of hinting that, you know, they're developing obviously the next gen Quest headset. And I think, you know, a lot of people, I saw a lot of people posting about this, you know, Quest 3 this, Quest 3 that. And I, I don't know why. I don't think the fact that they're working on their next headset already is like a huge surprise you know uh we yeah. we know that from previous hardware generations from oculus that they're they're immediately working on the next headset as soon as they've shipped the, the previous one and or if not they're working they on have, like even two generations ahead they have multiple different prototypes what they're working on together uh, yeah at the same time so yeah uh, it's it's very logical for a company like that that they they try new things and see what gets implemented and whatnot yeah. in the next iteration yeah. Well, it's it's logical. Yeah, but I think I think the biggest that sells well gets usually a second or third or fourth. As long as it sells well, there will be a new one coming, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't but think so. I think I think I the don't thing think is like sales for them matters that much. I think that they they're pushing this technology forward because they're in it for the long game, rather than like whether even mm -hmm. if the Quest Two didn't sell well, I still think they that they were, would be working mm -hmm. on a Quest Three. Yeah, I, I I agree with that point. Like it's not reactionary from a product development perspective. You interleave oh. and you just phase, and it's like this is already like what Mike was saying. This is this was already on the table. This has already been designed. They already know the target specs of what they want to create. We don't know it, not confirmed anyway, but we can guess. Um, and I've got two guesses. I think there's going to be foot tracking. Uh, and, and my wife laughed at me earlier. And I'm like, you did your arms. You did your hands, right? Why not get feet in there? You've got cameras. They're pointed downwards. They can see other stuff, you know? Yeah. Unless you've got a really awkward body shape, in which case, you know, maybe not. But that's the that's, best part there. And then secondly, colors. I mean, you've already seen it on Reddit. People have gone really yeah. crazy with the colors of the thing. It's not going to be black. It's not going to be white. 
it's going to be something awesome like turquoise or lava oh. orange or something. Like they're going to oh, okay. give, they're going to have a reason that you want to upgrade like sneakers. Oh, I thought you were going to say like see-through is going to be colored. That honestly, yeah, they I should bring that yeah, back. That. They should bring that yeah. back because the early consoles, like, and I'm talking not VR, I'm talking other consoles. Mm -hmm. When they released like in see-through or, or, or translucent, those sold loads, loads. They should do it. They should do it. Yeah. So, I, I don't, but, but I, let's say, would that mean that um, because they are, of course, they're working on new stuff, but let's say then the Quest 1 also like slips off even more from their, you know? I think the, the the plan, like they said, is to have everything compatible. So, you know, you release so, it on Quest, it's going to be working on Quest 1, Quest 2, Quest 3. There might be because, Quest 3 or even Quest 2 exclusive titles. Yeah, yeah. The I'm, like I'm, I'm mentioning this because I've seen, uh, for example, Rec Room as an example and a few others where they say, like, listen, this is not working on your Quest 1 anymore. Yep. And that will only become more and more with the Quest 3 then being around because then, yeah. you yeah. know, the difference will be huge. It's the exact um, same as like the iPhone model, right? Where you, you added the first iPhone, then when you're six generations deep, there's going to be apps that just do not run on the early stuff. And I think it'll start to become quite a gray area, which makes it tough for consumers. And what ends up happening is you kind of go like, okay, if I'm not on the latest or the second latest, I'm probably screwed, you know, and I'm going to have to upgrade at some point. It just drives I, that mentality. I think what they mean with this backwards compatibility is that it's actually just like Quest 1 titles will work on Quest 2. I don't think necessarily no. means that in the future people who develop for Quest 3 that it will necessarily also work on Quest 1. Uh, but I think as well, like depending on the price and everything else like if you're just developing solely for quest 3 then you could be missing out a big chunk of user base so i'd imagine most developers will be wanting to target all three systems to get the maximum exposure for their games and well, just now. like have have like like with quest 2 like we've seen now you get enhancements of yeah. those versions yeah higher re higher refresh yeah. rates better textures like like what you've got on the yeah. scaling system on a pc right you don't develop but, for yeah. one form of pc you develop for a kind of range exactly. and that's mm -hmm. what's going to end up yeah. happening but you know what like I'm glad it's been set. It's great. Uh, I'm looking forward to the next iteration of Quest. I'd be totally comfortable with that coming out a year after the Quest 2 launched. It'll be a little bit of a like, okay, this is funny because uh, I've got to upgrade now. But if they manage it a year, year and a half after, I'd go for another upgrade. Why not? Why not? So that, that that's the big, the biggest question, right? Is the yeah, when? when? Like, when is this going to happen? So you got you think you'd be happy with a, a year after Quest 2 launch? So you're talking like later on this year, is it? Yeah, I've, I've, I've said this before. I mean, we, I said this when Quest 2 landed was that like, I, I do expect them to fall into an annual cadence because it just ends up making it easy for announcements. It's like, all right, this year we're getting the new Samsung phone. What's it got? What are the bells and the whistles? And then you just focus on that. It's the same thing so with, it's, with VR. VR headset standalone. Yeah, okay. Give me the one Wait, every I, year. I, new I, features. Were you saying announcing or actually like selling the thing i mean selling it i mean i mean okay. so you just get in i mean the announcement will happen around the same point of the year the the headset will come out available for consumers about the same time of the year mm -hmm. every q3 we could have a new quest and it'll just dominate christmas every year from here on in it it just makes total sense you know okay i, I don't you? entirely agree with that um mainly because i see the quest 2 is an optimization of the quest 1 which makes mm -hmm. sense because there were a lot of features that could be optimized but in terms of novelty, I don't think it really brings a lot of new things to the table. You know, the refresh rate is a little bit better. The resolution is better. But I don't think that keep on pushing those benchmarks up will be enough to convince like people like me, for example, to invest in a, in a new headset. Because I even said back then with the Quest 1, I, yeah. I think the Quest 1 is still a great headset. I, I don't necessarily see the Quest 2 as the, even though it's an upgrade, I don't see it as the necessary upgrade that I need in order to keep on continuing playing VR. Yeah. If they bring with Quest 3 something like, you know, an incredibly increase in refresh rate or incredibly increase in resolution or a wider field of view or uh, very focal uh, um, uh, lenses, or whatever it is, if they bring in new technology, then yes. But if they're just going to say, oh, you know, we, we did a 10% upgrade in the resolution or we did uh, the refresh rate is now 110 hertz. Well, 110 hertz might actually be nice, like, you know, 120 hertz, whatever. Uh, having having a higher refresh rate will be something that convinced me, but not just a new color or like something mm -hmm. that is like, yeah. that well. I feel is more like a gimmick. It's like, like you said, like feed tracking. Even though I hope that will come. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All of VR chat just turned against you, Rowdy. You're dead, man. You're dead. <laughs> dead. Well, 
what they would what they could also introduce that's what apple does is where you can trade in your hats well your your phone and mm. get money back and then you get the new one so if, exactly. they, if they use that plus like the the lower the price the the more likely it will be that someone trades it in again sells it and just buys a new one again and mm. i think mm. software wise you can really say like listen you have a quest one this feature yeah uh, sorry it doesn't work anymore now quest two still has it and that's how you move forward so you can you can with software you can also force people into buying I, I just think uh, the question hardware. for me is like what kind of upgrades do they need to do mm -hmm. in order for me to buy the new version no but i think mm -hmm. i think we're talking about games i think like if if the hardware becomes more powerful you can get bigger games better games right now i still feel like we're in this in the in the party game era like they're not huge as games on the quest just yet we had a few you know saints and sinners etc but we're not in the like hardcore single player uh, scene yeah, mm. I, just, I, I yeah. That. and i think that's I just, where you can really get people interested i just think that since you already introduced like the newest processor like how, how much how much more can they put in that headset in such a short time right now because I don't think that, you know, the, the latest pro processes that they have in there is already a new upgrade from that right now mm -hmm. that they could upgrade the new headset with. So yeah. that's the, not something they have control mm -hmm. over. With one a year, there's not going to be so much change either because there's just frankly not enough dev time to put mm -hmm. some really exciting, massive feature in. Because yeah, it's exactly. just one a year. So. Yeah, but on the other side, we also buy iPhones every year. And I don't yeah. know, but there's but also that's, that's nothing the, going I, on I, with I those. I don't uh, see it as the same market. I don't see it as the same market. I hate to iPhone... fall into that market. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Personally, I, I don't think it's going to be this year. I think it's more likely next year. And I think, you know, I've talked about this before, but I don't think hardware is necessarily what we need right now, other than PSVR being the big exception. <laughs> like That does desperately need new hardware. Yeah, but every, every other platform, yeah. PC, Quest, I, I'm happy with the hardware that we've got right now. Yeah. It's the game that are the biggest uh, key to this because you don't buy a system because of the hardware specs you buy a system because of the games available on it so yeah. it, that needs to be leveraged but, more and, and yeah. like like Nathie yeah. said we need bigger more compelling single player experiences to bring uh, people across but, from other gaming platforms but even even if it would be next year then it's still fast and quick you know yeah uh, it is quick but they do work yeah. very fast um, well until you know, they've, they've got these kind of processes down to a t now i think until the rift s and uh oculus quest hopping then to to quest 2 oculus have been on a cadence of two years for the since the beginning so it's been a headset yep. every two years which is why i said you know i i would expect them to up their game a little bit and release within one to one and a half years because okay but but releasing in that time period releasing in spring is odd right even the start of summer is kind of odd but covid's thrown everything into weird territory now but this is the seasonal effect of of consumer mm. purchasing hasn't really changed much people are still buying around the holidays you know yeah but i think one of the key things to take away from this update is not only the fact that obviously they're working on next gen hardware but is that a lot of developers are making significant amounts of money on their games now and you know it and it's important also to have your vr game on the quest platform to get that revenue potential and a bit and like also, grapple tournament like we talked about earlier on yeah. you know it, right now it's stuck on steam and really that game needs to get onto the quest yeah. platform to give it that new lease and, of life and, and, and open also, it up to a wider audience Exactly. And also, I have a little bit of feeling from that conversation. They're like going away just a little bit from like only being like that gaming focused device because they're talking about like more business applications, talk about meeting up with colleagues. Fitness. And by, by yeah. saying these kind of things, I have the feeling that they're also willing to expand in those markets more and put some you know, research and development to that. Because I think that would be a great opportunity if we see more like business opportunities arise with that combine virtual reality into a specific kind of platform. Well, yeah, that's I, certainly their goal. We've seen that with the virtual office stuff that they were showing off, exactly. right? Uh, but uh, integrating I, I, keyboards I into what VR. You're, I think what you're saying, like, like it's totally like makes sense. Uh, and also, uh, because all these, like, they they made so much more money than they made with the Quest. It's insane. Uh, I, I, I've seen some some studios completely like move to another building because it, it can be bigger now because the quest do and things like that. Uh, and, and, and with that, like, um, studios mature more too, because it's not like every studio wants to make small games. Some of them have bigger goals. They really want to make something triple a. So with more money, there's more. So I think we're going to see an aftermath of games being way more professional, way more interesting, more deep, as I said, more single player. Uh, mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah, I think I think it's good news. I think we're gonna see some really like a boost in in quality. 
for sure. I hope so, because like if you look at the Walking Dead uh, Saints and Sinners, for for example, uh, yeah. they recently stated that the game sold 10 times more on the Quest platform than the PC platform did, and they made around $29 million yeah. in revenue. That's awesome for a vr title um, unless of course you're the person who so, was you know the uh the texture artist and you're going ah no one saw my beautiful textures on pc you know uh, but <laughs> the game is great in both platforms it's it really good. is it's one of those conversions that you thought wouldn't really work and then it they did an excellent and, and job that, and, and that, that have, like i don't know like exactly the the numbers but i think that's like 99 percent this quest 2 and then the rest is kind of I don't know. Uh, quest base is huge yeah, think, though, and the I thing is that it, that is a that is a, an yeah. awesome FPS with such quest bite and, and story. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? Like I mean, if you if you have a, if you're a quest owner and you look in the library and all of a sudden Saints drops on it, you're gonna buy that game, man. You're gonna buy that. Mm. Yeah. But I think the, the biggest takeaway was that obviously that the Quest platform was doing super well for, for the company and obviously they're doubling down on that and we're going to see another headset at some point in the future. We don't know when at this point, but it's great to see also that the developers are, are earning decent revenue on their investments. So that's really good to see and that the VR industry is thriving at this point, which is good. Yeah. Um, so the next bit of news is about a rumored new VR game in the works from id Software and publishers Bethesda. And this comes after a new listing was spotted last week from the Australian Games Classification Board. And the listing uh, titled uh, a project called, well, the, the title is called Project 2021A. Um, and it states that the game will be giving an R rating, so it will be at like 18 plus. And apparently it will feature high impact violence and online interactivity with the year of production being 2021. So it's just it's an like id software game. One. That's all what they make, right? <laughs> that sounds like every game they make. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, you've only got a few different IPs that, that id Software actually make, unless it's a new one, which I think is very unlikely. Um, I, I don't remember them making cute games either. <laughs> cute no. Games. Yeah. So do, do any of you want to take a stab at, as to what this might be? Yeah, I know what it is. It's, I think we, what we've it's, hinted it's at it. It's obvious. It's set in 2021. <laughs> Dude, it's what, Roddy? It's Doom, but it's set in 2021. Oh, oh, right. oh Doom guy comes God. down. Yeah, yeah. beats up the virus. That no, great. no, I I have only one guess, and it's just it's it's my it's my personal love, and that's Quake because they said it was online, they said it was hard hit, and I think it's going to be a Quake multiplayer Quake? title. I think it's Quake. But yeah, I think I think it's going to have. Um, I think what they'll do is probably do the single player multiplayer package, which they've done so well. Bring Quake finally to VR because they've done a few tests. A lot of their online stuff has done well. Quake Live and stuff like that. I played all their titles. Um, Champions was the most recent one, which they kind of mucked up a little bit, but got some good footfall. But I'd, but that they have not brought Quake into VR, and it needs to come to VR for sure. Okay, interesting. Well, what that, that would mean that that like uh, it would get a boost uh, into the esports scene as well. Uh, if they nail it, they could be one of the first to like have a heavy hitter. You know, well, definitely. I, can't wait. I mean, we were just we, we were just playing Grapple Tournament, and it has so many characteristics that show it's absolutely viable. And yeah. if they've been testing this in in playtest sessions, they've proven that to themselves already. Um, the fact that you've got indies now seeding and starting to build on those grassroots already yeah. shows you that VR is compatible with a Quake speed game. Mm. So I think it's going to be Doom Eternal, and this is the reason why. So the original, well, the reboot of Doom launched in 2016, and then a year later we got Doom VFR, which released on PSVR and, and, and PCs as well. Yep. And then Doom Eternal launched in 2020, and you got Doom Eternal VR potentially... 2021 so is that multiplayer that's, that's though? Of, it had some multiplayer aspect to it it wasn't a clear-cut multiplayer from what i understand um but i think i think i, I i'm hinting more towards doom obviously you've got other ips from id software like quake like you yeah. mentioned zim and you also got rage as well although i think that's probably unlikely um but this but is yeah, that's I, I why i think it's, it's not doom because IP, because it. they've not, done right. doom vfr it didn't land particularly well and like Rage, with which you know Carmack talked about before, they spent way too much on resources and development, the technology behind it. They'd like to iterate quickly. And Quake, since Quake 4, and as I said, Quake Champions, mm -hmm. hasn't had VR attention at all. And it have always struck. I've, I've watched it for quite a while because I'm a Quake player. I mean, it's been with me since I was like 16. I mean, they're, yeah. they're, they're, not, they're kind of like the, the crowd, crow team behind Sirius Sam. They're not afraid to take a chance on something and fail at a project. And they tend to try to do that out on a limb. So I just feel like since they've tried 
Doom VFR already. I see what you're saying, but that would be doubling down on an existing project, yeah, on I, existing tech. I do, right? I do think times have really changed when they made that. Like it was. I, totally I, yeah, I'm with market. Nathan on that one as well. Like I don't know if, um, even though it's nostalgia, it's like oh, you know, you want to get Quake in there. Even though I mean, I'm not really a Quake player, so I can't really speak for that. But I wonder, like, just vrifying that if that's going to be enough to appeal to a new generation of gamers who've played so many different kinds of games and like there's been like so many games that have already attempted a style like that of course they haven't been like the big uh, uh publishers mm -hmm. but at the same t at the same time I'm, I'm wondering how how much more new stuff can they bring into this for this to becoming something different so and also i wanted to ask sim you probably know this um, yeah is duke nukem is that also uh it's software not it mm -mm. no, no, no not it but yeah i agree duke would be awesome but it's been a while it, the thing is uh, gamers fps lovers will remember duke nukem forever and the 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 trashy mm, years that we had to wait for no. that to come out and then how it came out so i think the feet the the dream of duke nukem has kind of died yeah. for most v you know serious fps players quake the thing that a lot of people who don't know much about Quake will, will fixate on is probably the multiplayer experience. And although that's my favorite bit, Quake mm -hmm. 2, for example, the attack of the Strogs, the torture scenes, the mechanisms that you had, just the, the, the kind of gruesomeness of that um, was, was very solid. And recently, there's been Quake 2 mods, even as far back as 2016, that have brought those original models and support for VR into the game. So it's it's been teased, it's been possible. There have been mm. chatter, you know, on 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 forums, for example, well, it, about that. So that's it, it, why I think a strong single player spine plus the multiplayer <laughs> aspect could really hit home for it. Like I like if you look at where the money's at for them, it's Doom. Like the like Eternal as well has yeah. has sold also very well. Uh, yeah. And 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 as Rowdy said, like for younger generations, they know Doom, uh, even that it's very old. But they were able to modernize it. Well, yeah. Quake is it's not falling behind, but it's more for no, I'd say the gamers from a, it, from a different era. Yeah. You know, it's not uh, it's not fitting in with like Apex Legends and Fortnite. It's, it's more crowd. you can yeah, sell right. it to a more mainstream crowd. Yeah, Although uh, it would also be nice if they would maybe VRify uh, Rage because they also made Rage. But I don't know that's if that's uh, like the, the second one didn't sell so well. So I don't know about is, that. But Doom makes total sense. Is Carmax still talking to it? Because if Carmack's still talking to id, I don't think he is. If he was still talking to id... Not after the whole Bethesda thing no. and Zenimax lost... Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, good point, good point. He's, he's very, very, <laughs> very distanced very restricted from them. in terms of what he can do in terms of talking um, to them. But I was thinking, like, I, Rage didn't even clock on my radar until you guys mentioned it. But Rage had a lot of interesting technology put into that as an engine that yeah. never really got the fanfare that it probably deserved. So mm -hmm. converting Rage as an existing IP, think of that, like, think of Borderlands and how they converted that into VR. A Rage-type environment actually could do very well, and and I, I do wonder now if, if that's a possibility, a likely possibility. I accept, by the way, your argument about Doom. I just like playing the Quake mm, card yeah, here, yeah, because yeah. partly because my heartstrings are plucked, but Doom, from a soundscape... There's no game that sounds but, better than Doom, so Doom, I'd like accept Doom, that. But Doom F VFR was more, like, to me, was more of an experience. Like, a, a, yeah, they yeah, took yeah. a part of the Doom game, the new yeah. 2016 game, and they made that VR, but it was more of an experience. Doom. It wasn't, like, a full I was so I was so disappointed. Game. I held off playing Doom on PC. I still haven't played Doom on PC because I thought they would VRify it when it came out as this, like, chapter of the game equivalently or a slice of cake that tastes a bit like Doom. Uh, it was a disappointment for me. I mean, it was one of the reasons, one of the driving reasons why I bought a PSVR was I thought mm -hmm. Doom was going to be the full deal, but it wasn't. Because we don't know if it's going to be a full uh, title or just like it could also just be a VR support thing yeah. or it could be. Could any. be, yeah. But I think, you know, a lot of people in the chat are like asking about Wolfenstein as well. But we've got to remember no. that Wolfenstein, it was published by Bethesda, but it was actually developed by Machine Games and Arcane Studios. So it's not id software. They worked They worked on the older ones, but they didn't work on the newer ones that you know, yeah. those are called yeah. Machine Games. And also the Wolfenstein so, VR experience was also made by Machine Games, as far as I know. So. Yeah, so the, the, the main sort of titles that you know, they're, uh, their mainstays are Doom. Uh, Rage and Quake, really, they're, yeah. they're, they're the, the main three. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, you know, I think it's great that they're working on a new title. It's exciting nevertheless. And of course, if you can't wait uh, for whatever this might be, you can get your Doom fix on Quest anyway, because like we said last week, oh, yeah. you can now play Doom 3 on Oculus Quest 
using the Dr. Mm -hmm. Beef mod uh, available right now on SideQuest. Nice. Uh, and, uh, but as soon as we hear any more information about this game, we'll obviously keep you posted. SideQuest have like a Dr. Beef session section up right now, which is really oh, cool dude. to see and <laughs> totally deserves it. It's um, funny. I was wondering, being a fan of Frag Dolls and stuff, Rosie, are you much into this kind of game or, or do you have, a, do you have an, a point of view on this? No, sadly not. No, <laughs> I'm more of a Nintendo game myself. We can tell from you, the giant collection see. in the <laughs> background. Yeah, yeah. We got for audio listeners. We got a Exposed. Wii, a GameCube, an original yeah. SNES, I think, Super Nintendo. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. The classics. Any favorite titles on those? Because we do have Nintendo fans here for sure. Um, mainly the Zelda series, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah. I love and, Zelda. Um, yeah. The Switch mainly at the minute, to be fair. Oh, the Switch is Switch, so good. The Switch is awesome. Yeah. I've been playing so much Hades on the Switch. Like, it's oh, been my yeah. go-to console of yeah. choice for that game. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. Still not got that yet, but all my friends oh. have been raving about it. All right, it. any Switch suggestions? Because I'm a big Switch fan. Go on. What do you, what are you <laughs> playing? Well, at the minute, I'm just playing a lot of Smash, just because it's like a chill session sort of game. But before that, it's Animal Crossing. I'm just addicted. Yeah. Oh, Animal yeah. Crossing. I'm sorry. Well. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm just addicted to Animal Crossing. Well, it's the perfect antidote to 2020 and 2021, to be honest. That's, Plus, you got to get... You've got to get those, uh, those turnip turnip prices right. Oh, you yeah, know? The, the stonks, absolutely. That was the whole precursor to the GameStop. <laughs> it was, totally. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is at home, you know, getting the stonks right from turnip sales. So yeah. that's how it happened. But so Mike true. has been investing in, 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 in turnips while everyone has been turnips. investing in turnips. <laughs> of course, yeah. you've got to time the market right, my man. You've got to. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But yeah, the biggest thing for me for 2020 is just playing games which are positive and make me feel happy. Yeah. Totally. Um, yeah. So I've, I've sort of switched to like the, the calm gamer. So yeah, Animal Crossing and just games which just make me feel really good to play. Because I think yeah. that's that's been really important last year, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think you still try Doom then. Doom is yeah. Still... <laughs> it's such a very like game. Yeah. No, no, no. I'll tell you what. I'm gonna give Rosie some homework. The homework is this: you put on the Doom OST and you play Animal Crossing, and I'm curious what results. You know, because <laughs> there was actually some weird crossover stuff though recently. You know, with Isabel. That's right. Like, yeah, that's right. Yeah, they released was. at the same time, so they there did. was like a ton of meme content. With that's funny. Poor yeah. Isabel just been smashed and. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, awesome. So yeah, that is um, a new game coming from Ed Software, published by Bethesda. We don't know what it is yet. But this um, is good stuff. We, so we have Rockstar now. We have Ed Software because yeah. Rockstar is still working, working on something, on something. As well. So yeah, yeah good stuff. Valve. Well, stuff yeah. in the works. Well, yeah. well, talking about Valve, uh, that kind oh. of nicely brings us onto a segue onto the final Half bit of Ford? news. No, don't even start no, that. No, no, no. Oh. But we did get some very interesting and exciting news, nevertheless, and that is oh, because Portal 3. Gabe Newell. Oh no! Okay. No, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Team Fortress. Um, can no, you tell Nathy's right, been out. away? Can, or, can orange, you tell? Orange Box yeah. VR Edition. No. Okay. You're screwing up the intro, Nathy. Oh, okay, okay. Go ahead, Mike. Sorry. So uh, Gabe Newell, CEO of Valve, uh, he gave a, an interview with uh, a New Zealand news network uh, recently because he's uh, currently um, yeah. living in New Zealand, actually. He's been living in uh, New Zealand since the kind of whole COVID lockdown happened. Uh, he was there on holiday and apparently he just decided to stay there. Um, and we've kind of talked about this on the show before, but what he was talking about was his plans to include brain-computer interface technology into future VR headsets. So unlike uh, Neuralink, which we've also talked about on the show before from Elon Musk, which is like an, a, an evasive BCI, which requires you to have like probes inserted into your brain by a sophisticated robot. Uh, what he envision, uh, envisions is a non-evasive BCI built into the facial interface and head strap of a VR headset. Mm. So you kind of have these kind of like um, sensors dotted around the head strap that can read and potentially write to your brain. So you're saying not so invasive, so it, you don't have to go through the skull and stuff like that. That's that's what you're saying. No, 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 no. Yeah, it, like, yeah. just just sits on your on your head. Mm. Um, so we explained that they're working with uh, Open BCI to develop uh, an open source software, so developers can directly tap into the part of the brain responsible for visual, audio, and sensory feedback. Now, this could mean on a very basic level that games could read the player's brain waves and ramp up the difficulty of the game. Like if players getting bored, for example, or their, you know, their, you know, their, their, um, their attention is, you know, drifting. So, you know, they could ramp things up a little bit, which is kind of interesting. But his plans aren't just to read the brain waves, but also to write to the brain instead. And this yeah. is kind of where it gets a bit I, I crazy and also kind of scary. Okay, I thought I misheard you there because no. I'm, I'm very, no, no, no. very interested in this part now. Yeah. Go ahead. 
Yeah. So he goes on to say that the real world will stop being the metric that we apply the best possible visual fidelity. The real world will seem flat, colorless, blurry compared to the experience you'll be able to create in people's brains. And he continued by saying that developers should start thinking about how to use BCI technology now because it's going to be important in all aspects of the entertainment industry uh, moving forward. And he seems to think that this will, will be as soon as maybe 2022 in terms of like what they want to do with this. Maybe it won't be full writing, but maybe a, a lot of like the reading technology that they want to do. This is certainly what he's hinting at. Uh, uh, okay. And he's talking about possible uh, integration of BCI um, in the new Valve Index, potentially. That's kind of the plan that they're going for. And the interesting thing is, like, before Rowdy sort of goes off on the science part of this and tells us that what he's saying is wrong and is, is impossible, um, I've actually been trying something out uh, this myself, like this week, actually, from a company called Nextmind. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll show you what it is. Yeah. And this is, um, this is like a device. Let me show you. I can kind of focus on this. Um, so it's like a little uh, device that you can kind of clip onto the back of your VR headset with this little clip. So it looks like, a, uh, and it's it looks got, like, like a, a some kind of a back-end head strap almost mm -hmm. type piece of black mm -hmm. plastic yeah. with two hinges yeah. on the sides. What, yeah. So it's got a, a clip in the center, and then the side yeah. bits are, it almost looks like a drone is what you're holding yeah. up. Yeah. So, <laughs> But then so, tentacles that like attach to your head, right? Yeah, was this comfortable yeah, so these, to wear? <laughs> this looks... Yeah. It's absolutely fine. They're like little comb-shaped sensors, and that's they're designed that shape so they can go through your hair. Obviously, I don't have that problem, but you know, if you did, then they can go through your hair and still make contact with the back of your yeah. uh, your, your head, essentially. How does that uh, feel and, and as a bald this... man? Like, does that does that irritate your skin at all, or was it actually pretty comfortable? Oh, it's fine. Okay. It's fine. You don't have to apply a lot of pressure, uh, and it will give you a readout as to how. Um, how good the, the contact is with the back okay. of your head uh, yeah. and it'll go green if it's good and then can can read uh, what's going on. But essentially how it works is that um, it reads the signals from the visual cortex of your brain. Mm. Um, so you've got a few demos to try out, which are on the flat screen, and then you've also got a VR demo as well, which they've provided. And what it enables you to do is you, you attach it to the back of your headset or you know a baseball cap or they provide a head strap, which looks kind of goofy. Um, but then you kind of focus on an object and that apparently projects a shape onto your visual cortex and that can be read by this device. Uh, it's pretty rudimentary in terms of what shapes it can read, uh, but then you can use it to just kind of toggle basic on off switches. So it's not like full mind control. It's not you like you like can do like uh, lift up X-Men stuff where it's like, hey, let me smash You're not like Professor X. No? no, 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 no. So you can't like lift an object up and move it across the screen. You, you do it, kind it of literally like just is an <laughs> Like, well, that's true. That's true. I am. Um, but like, you know, it's, it's just simple on and off switch. So you can trigger yeah. an event or you can like, you can kill an enemy, for example, just by focusing on it. But it's still it. pretty impressive, a, a, right? I mean, very impressive. Sounds, sounds kind of like, and, and to be honest, but... wait, 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 you can kill an enemy by focusing your mind on him. How is that yeah. not Professor X? Yeah. That's exactly Professor well, yeah, X. That's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but, but it, it, it's it's basically a switch. So you're you're toggle, you're, yeah. you're focusing on the enemy, and then it, like the switch is saying like right, okay, it's that's dead actually, now. That's, it, it's that's pretty. Kind of... Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say it's pretty basic in terms of what's available now, but yeah. you know what what Gabe is talking about is like probably the next evolution of what is cap this this would be capable of. But, um, yeah. but what I want to say is now from, from even trying it now um, in its very basic form, I was what I was really impressed about is the user experience is so easy to use. It's got like a single button to turn it on. It connects to your PC via Bluetooth. Um, it's not directly compatible with the Quest, but obviously through the PC yeah. it is using virtual desktop. Um, and and they've got this like super easy software. You calibrate it, it works, and it's so accurate that you know I put my wife in there and she was able to pick it up like instantly. Um, and 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 it's that like frictionless uh, experience that I wasn't really expecting with something like this. I thought it was going to be way more complicated. And then when this came about, this whole like news about uh, Gabe being interested in this, like we know in the past, and how this is main, you know, maybe coming in the near term rather than long term future. Yeah, yeah. It got me pretty excited having just tried it. Is this your first what time? Do you, what do you what do you like? Think? That, that, that's what I'm wondering. Like, is this uh, the first time you've ever used like medical electronics that allow you to control something with your mind? Just wondering. I've only tried ever so once before. I went to the gadget show and um, they had like a kind of brain interface thing there where you could control uh, a ball and yeah, basically it had a fan well. underneath it and you could control how high or how low it is by controlling the power of the fan it's with amazing. your mind. Yeah, yeah. 
depending on how much you are focusing. Um, yeah, so I've tried something similar, but not obviously in a, like a consumer-esque kind of product because mm -hmm. although this is a development kit right now, it's like 400 bucks, yeah. um, you know, it's pretty ready for consumers, but it just obviously yeah. needs the content to use it. Can yeah. I quickly chime in on this? Because uh, sure. this, is, this is actually fairly old technology because I meant with, I, I, I remember with the rise of the Oculus Rift, there was this game, I forgot the name uh, of the game, but it was on, on Kickstarter, where they also use like mind control to mm. be playing the game. Uh, you would be able to control like lifting rocks and throwing rocks yep. away. And by, mm. by focusing on different parts, they had a bit more. So you have more points and say, indeed what you said, like you can, you can read how much focus you have. You can you can read that fairly easily because it, it depends on brain activity, uh, and also which regions that are more active and less active, depending on if you have a good accuracy or not. However, if we're going to be talking talking about writing to the brain, um, I I don't know of a single BCI interface that can do that uh, by actually giving. Well, there there are BCI interfaces that can do that, but they require FDA approval and they need to be used for a medical condition. For example, if you look at uh, uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation where they use uh, magnets, where they drive a high current through in order to make electric fields into your brain, then you are actually modifying specific regions and that is FDA approved for people with depression, for people with the obsessive compulsive disorder, you can modify parts of the brain. The danger with that is, is that it's, we don't know exactly what we're modifying often the brain. The brain is a network. So if you modify one specific part, you will be modifying, you know, down the line, other parts as well. There will be a consequence mm -hmm. of this. Doing that from a gaming perspective, I don't see that becoming FDA approved in 2022 <laughs> Uh, to be writing things to your brain, um, yeah. I don't. I don't see that happening. The, so, the fact that Valve works and it doesn't does it necessarily mean that they're gonna use it for games? I mean, or I don't well, know. they they said gaming is their primary application right now. But okay. like, and like you said, like Gabe admitted in the interview, like it has it it carries risk with with doing this kind of stuff. And he he says that the idea of a BCI making someone feel pain is a complicated topic and adds that the interfaces will be susceptible to viruses and other technologies suggesting that they'll need some strong safeguards in place. God, the, the entire scary. problem Shit, that I have scary, with yeah. that is that yeah. we just don't have the, the the basic understanding of how that is being processed into your brain properly for us to be mm. saying, okay, and we're also gonna modify it now. Yeah. We have, we have yeah. an understanding of how pain works, but not in a way that we can say, okay, we're gonna sp specifically target this part of the brain, this specific network in order you, for you to feel this. That's like what you, you can do and what they, again, what they do with trans transcranial magnetic stimulation is you can, on the motor cortex, you can drive electrical fields there that will then give you, for example, a twitch in your arm or a twitch mm -hmm. in your leg. So you can yeah. do by electrical stimulation of the, of the top part of the way the motor cortex is, of your brain, you can actually create senses. That, so that is possible. But to be using that, again, in a gaming perspective, I don't see that as being... Mm -hmm. uh, being applied really quickly. The only thing that I immediately mm -hmm. jump on on this, this technology, I think like Mike, really excited for the opportunity that it presents. And my my immediate analogy that I draw mm -hmm. is when you see a, a, a 3D film in the cinema and it's kind of like, it's okay, but there's there's a loss at the lenses that they give you, this all that kind of stuff. And then you try that in VR and it's like, wow, this is all super clear now. That that signal being cleaned up by the fact that you got a direct interface into the brain, I like the way Gabe described it, um, being more in a sensory way appetizing than even the real world inputs. Like for example, my eyesight at you know 36 is like slowly going off, and I can tell, and it's a bit like okay, but like if if you can get a direct interface going, you don't need to rely on how good your eyes are. You don't need mm -hmm. to rely on how good. You know, what if you lost a finger or something? But now you could feel that experience of touching a hot kettle. Like I totally get why that's attractive. I agree with Rowdy that a proper application of that is definitely some time out. Uh, the only thing that really makes me nervous is immediately this is like Minority Report all over again. Mm -hmm. We're going to read your thoughts. Oh, right. You're not focusing on work? Well, mm, we, we can tell. See this little chart here? You see this <laughs> yeah. data point? Oh, right. You're not focusing on our ad. Well, maybe we should do something to make you focus on our ad. Z Zim, you should really stop thinking about torturing people. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, man. It's hard after you played Doom so much. Gabe, Gabe I, I, calling you again that you didn't buy anything in a summer sale. <laughs> <laughs> 
Or no, I, I do you think... just directly write to your brain and make sure that you buy something. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 oh, you're God. right. Like, your wallet, but your wallet. The yeah. second side of this, not just the observer <laughs> side and what people can do from the outside with that data, but the idea of a Trojan or a virus or something, someone's yeah. got a computing interface and like, all of a sudden you become a blank disk? Can you think, just yeah. be an empty husk? Like, it's a really interesting and terrifying future for somebody. He actually, he actually joked about that in the interview in a very lighthearted way and said like, we don't want to go down the route of like, oh, remember that guy, Bob, that we used to once know, he used a VR headset and he wiped his mind and now he's like running around naked in the woods. He did actually say that, but <laughs> but like, I, 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 do, I do think that this, I do think this whole like idea of, of writing to the brain is, is like sort of long-term like, something that he's invested in something he wants in the future but i think the short term is that devices like this and certainly having um probes like this integrated into a headset mm. would certainly make sense and if just by reading the brain waves and it's not writing and it's not as dangerous or as evasive then i do see really interesting use cases like you know if you take half-life alex for example and maybe like the narrative was like that alex had uh, telekinesis powers rather than like telekinesis gloves and then you could just like pick up objects like ammo and supplies with your mind alone whilst also using the controllers because i don't think this will ever replace controllers i do think it will work in harmony with them as an as an addition yeah i, uh, I completely agree with that and that uh, is i think that would be possible. really cool and, and safe possible, yeah and i think if you yeah, look at like what definitely. for example what they can do with 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 mri scans nowadays that they can actually detect yeah. like which picture you're looking at which i think is really amazing mm. they can even like we, we like in a, in a certain way they can regenerate a picture so they can like because of machine learning and, and, and a lot of data that they've collected they've now managed to reconstruct the image that you're looking at up to a certain percentage which is really interesting from a from a data perspective that they can actually yeah. read out what you're looking at immediately this technology has me thinking of rosie and any other artist because oh, I could just sit down and my brain would do the work for me. <laughs> exactly. This is it. Well, get up out your chair. Well, you wouldn't be limited by your muscle memory, but by your brush strokes, by all that kind of stuff. You can just take that picture that you've got yeah. in your head and almost just tap in instantaneously create yeah. it. Yeah. I'm interested of what it, sort of abstract art would create as well, whether you're mm. it, like different brain waves would be a different brush and tilt brush. And then it would just sort of like, that would be bit... super cool. That sort of trippy art. It would be kind of funny, like, uh, you know, one of the guys said about being distracted, you know, you've got like yeah. an art piece in your mind and then all of a sudden you're yeah. thinking about like the macaroni and cheese you're going to have for dinner and then all of a sudden like macaroni and cheese is in your art piece. It's like, <laughs> what's going to happen? <laughs> what's going to happen? Not... How do you change? How do you distinguish between the two? Exactly. And I spend most of my life distracted. So <laughs> some pretty weird, weird shit right there. But yeah, I, but yeah, I, I just, it's hard. I don't know where I stand on this. Like, where's my border of meta, you know? Like, mm. How far should we blend with technology? Should yeah. it, like, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. It does mm. feel like a Black Mirror episode. Does when my, you talk yeah. about my, like this. It's like, does my brain have privacy? Yeah. yeah. And, well, uh, that's it. And, and the, the, <laughs> the, the, the way he's kind of saying it is that there's so much data there available. Like, it, it, it's oh, yeah. so compelling yeah. to, to get involved yeah. in that. Yeah. And I'm sure other companies are feeling the same way. You know, like, there's so much Can't data to be had. Right? Yeah, exactly. What do you think? And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm more intrigued with the whole, like, you know, reading your brainwaves and interpreting, interpreting mm -hmm. them into in-game actions and stuff like that. I think mm -hmm. it's super interesting. And I think it is probably coming probably sooner than we probably anticipate. But the whole, like, mm. jacking in thing and, like, Neuralink and, you know, this kind of writing, I think, is, is, is so, so far into the future long-term uh, plans and goals. It's really interesting though. What was the name of the device that you were showing us there a moment ago, Mike? What was that again? Okay, that was uh, called the Next Mind. Um, I've got a video uh, coming out about that on Tuesday where I kind of show it working. And like I said, you know, I was skeptical. I thought it was going to be a gimmicky thing at first, but it did actually blow my mind, which is um, very impressive. <laughs> Literally blow my mind. Yeah, it did. You see Mike it running did. around the woods naked, you'll know. <laughs> You'll know why. But like, you know, even showing it to, to my wife, Kate, and I was just like, you know, just check this out and see what you think. And and, and it, she just picked it up instantly like I did. I thought there was going to be a learning curve to it. And they did say that, you know, you, you'll get better at it the more you use it. But straight off the bat, it just works straight away. And it's amazing when you say like, okay, with your mind, click on this button and it just happens. And do you know what I mean? Like it, it, it feels like magic. 
and yeah. that's the amazing thing with technology when it's almost indistinguishable from magic that's when you know it's something super exciting see so, rowdy quest three yeah, that's what i've been playing around with next q3 oh, there you that'd go that'd be a great upgrade yeah it would I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> i mean i don't know if facebook is the one that i would like to know what I'm my sure brain would look i'm like. sure i'm sure mark likes your brain rowdy <laughs> yeah he would love to get hold of your brain um, so yeah, that is um, Gabe talking again about uh, brain computer interfaces, which he wants to be integrated into the future VR yeah, headsets. Better. Obviously, they're doing super well with the index sales right now, still like topping the uh, the charts and sometimes yeah. even hard to get hold of. So great for them. Uh, we just need more games from them, which they also hinted at that they're working on as well. So that's good news. Um, so before we get into our hot topic this week, uh, I think Nathie's got something that he's uh, been scouring the Reddit world and has plucked something interesting from there to share with us all yeah, so, so i'll pass over to nathy so, so do you remember that. this this ancient conversation on this podcast like 85 years ago where we spoke about rocket shoes oh mm. yeah well they're back yes, i do remember Wait, yeah, rocket shoes adam was, savage thing wasn't it yeah it wasn't it wasn't it like an adam savage kickstarter yeah. bonus or something like it was a yeah. top tier you could get special yeah. shoes yeah um they're back and, and now they are back, back. <laughs> better than ever they yeah. are now not rocket shoes, but motorized shoes. And you can actually walk with them. Uh, it's like a treadmill, but better. And uh, someone on Reddit posted this okay. and said, like, oh, I played God, No Sky so with it. And, they, and, and like he made it himself. Um, they don't go sideways yet. They only go forward and backwards. It looks uh, really comfortable as well if I see the person like... Well, yeah, this. I mean, it does look kind of... <laughs> you know, I do, I do think you need the right service for this, but... Um, yeah, it's like something that someone invented, and and I thought it, looks, it was it looks cool though. It's yeah, no, I, I, and and I think how it works is like it just, I think it detects. It's like two like little RC cars that you like strap onto your feet or something that just know that you go forward and backwards and they kind of move <laughs> you. <laughs> but yeah, it looks amazing. It looks amazing, and, and um, I was like, I, I need to share this because like it's been a while ago we 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 spoke about the rocket shoes. Yeah. It looks like he's wearing a harness, so he's like he's suspended from the ceiling, it looks like, just yeah. in case he does fall he there. Best be strapped in. Because I think if <laughs> so you imagine make, if you can speed them up, them. then you can have an advantage, Rowdy, and for speed example, population up. one, you know, where yeah. you walk faster than anyone else. <laughs> I still think, you know, we were talking, we were joking before the podcast about dumb ways to die, but like if you found like a body <laughs> strapped into all that gear, you'd be asking a couple of questions. <laughs> it's all right. But it's like oh, wow. Didn't we, we saw this um, like prototype type thing before with the, I suppose, you, you, you what did you call them, uh, Nathy? Like a, almost like a treadmill for your foot, right? Yeah. And and we've seen the ones where they were like a staircase that would walk with your feet, so to yeah, speak, yeah, like yeah, ahead those, of you, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, the robot ones. So yeah. I feel like we are coming to a point where we answered the point that Rowdy said probably two and a half years ago on the podcast where it's like, you need to be walking. Like if you want to feel like you're moving, you need to have this. But does this solve, this doesn't solve the vestibular problem, right? Because you're not actually moving. So so all no. the inner ear bones and stuff aren't actually triggering, right? right? Well, there, there, are, there are different parts about like, you know, movement. You did like, you know, like the positioning of your feet and your, your legs and your knees and your joints and all of that. That's all important to give the sense of movement. Uh, I still don't know if this is a natural thing because you, your foot is kind of like sliding away every time. So you'll still be like walking like you're on like roller skates, right? I mean, yeah. I don't, I haven't tried it, of course, but it, it does look a little bit like walking on roller blades or. or yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, roller skates. That's yeah. hard. Yeah. And that's the problem. Which is with also all, not a very with, comfortable thing to do. <laughs> it's yeah. the same with, with, with omnidirectional treadmills. And we've, we've talked about this on the show before. And there's a good episode where Rowdy kind of went into a bit of a deep dive on it. But essentially, the problem is that although you might be, your brain might be like, oh, okay, we're walking now, it doesn't feel natural at all. You have kind of feel like Bambi on ice the first time you jump on one. Mm -hmm. um, and you've got to learn, like almost relearn how to walk and run to adapt to the device. And then that's not intuitive at all either. So we still haven't got to that kind of like, this is a really good idea for solving the VR locomotion problem. I, I still think, you know, just room scale locomotion is the best yeah. thing you can get right but, now but, but uh, actually again, just having space and yeah. again there are people who also just have regular problems with walking and just are covered mm -hmm. with seaweed all of a sudden <laughs> oh yeah that's true that's very true that happens I don't know. it's it's interesting to see that that people are just like hmm 
maybe I should make something for my feet. And then this pops up and it's like, I love the creativity yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah. So oh, what is this called? Do. Does this have a specific name or something? Is this going to be on sale or is this just a like, made I, for themselves? I, I as far as you no can idea. tell. There was a long discussion with details and stuff, but it's just called motorized shoes. All right. oh, <laughs> like, I, I think the guy who posted it didn't even have like the idea that people would respond this way. We're like, <laughs> Like this, like some people are like, this is amazing. Some people are like, okay, uh, the, the chat describes go, go like completely nuts. <laughs> like you would drive out of your window. <laughs> the, the chat just uh, described it perfectly for the audio listeners. Uh, Julien Collin said, uh, uh, it looks like a white person trying to moonwalk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice well, find nice. there, Nathy. Nice find. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Fun. yeah. So what we're going to try and do is try and scour Reddit, like, and and deliver you some stuff from the community every week as well to kind of mix it up a bit. Um, so hopefully you'll enjoy that going forward. Oh, so in the chat, someone says it it's it's open source. So if anyone wants to continue making something oh, out of it, nice. then uh, hey, cool. dovetails nice for uh, for 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 our show today. Nice, yeah. beautiful segue there, because of course now it's time to speak, to speak to our special guest, Rosie. Uh, about her work and about uh, Tilt Brush moving to open source. So uh, Rosie yeah. Summers uh, is a 3D artist and pioneer in creating artwork in VR and has worked on projects for the like of Google, the National Football, Football Museum, and even the BBC. Pretty crazy. Um, so Rosie, maybe we should start at the beginning. Like how, how did you get into to VR? Maybe your work prior to VR that kind of led you into that kind of uh, medium in the first place. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, my journey started in 2014, really if we count the DK1. Okay, which, yeah, um, nice. Yeah, which I experienced the Tuscany fountain scene. Oh, like yeah, the signature, classic. Signature VR dinosaur uh, material that right there. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that's where I thought that the, the sort of feeling that this is going to be something big, it obviously wasn't there yet because I, I felt really sick. Um, yes. But I had that excitement, you know, that the tech had progressed to such a stage that I could walk around in the space and um, look around me, and it, I had no idea the tech had got to such a stage. Yeah. And then um, a few months later, it was the Google Cardboard, which yeah. um, really gave me such a boost that this how powerful this medium could be. Just mm -hmm. a piece of cardboard with my phone, and it transcended me in the, into a whole another world. And I actually felt like I had presence there, and mm. it was just that little demo experience, you know, like the little wolf and when you're on the boat and then the big whale comes yeah. over yes. and yeah. then the flowers grow, just that little experience. And that to me just showed that this could be the future of storytelling. And um, I was just so excited from just from that little, 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 little tiny demo. Mm. I was just, I knew that this was going to be a special point, you know, in, 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 um, storytelling and narratives and yeah so that that's yeah, I, what really got me into use and that was literally just a flimsy piece of cheap cardboard on my phone mm -hmm. and then um, that really got me excited yeah. and then it was i like actually... what you just said about like you know like it's like the future of storytelling because i think yeah. that all of us think of it that way as well because if you experience a story to you being told in, in, in this kind of medium it's so much more immersive and you're so much more part of it than with like just reading it or or, or going through a book or like it's such a different kind of medium yeah uh, uh, like, like we haven't seen before. Absolutely. Know? And that was the first time Peter and it's funny, the image had had that effect on me as well. Mm. Mm. And it's funny you say, like, you started back on, on the DK1 with the Tuscany demo because whenever oh, yeah. someone mentions Tuscany now, it immediately, like, brings me back to that little villa. <laughs> little fountain. Yeah. Um, you know? <laughs> and, and it's funny because it made you feel sick as well. And I think we all got motion sick, you know, the first times yeah. uh, exploring that villa, but it's still a very special place in our heart. Absolutely. So at the time, were you working in sort of like... Um, like uh, as an artist, like as, wow. as, a, as a 3D artist or, or what, what were you doing back then? Yeah, it's a good question. So I started off as like a traditional painter. So mainly portraits was my okay. thing. Painting lots of, you know, emotional portraiture and stuff like that. Very oil paint sort of based. And then I sort of got bored right. of, of the static and the flat. And that's when I went to study animation. So that's like a new way of telling stories for me that I'd never told before because it was using motion to you know, bring out character and, and, and tell narratives. And that's, it was actually through studying animation that I found VR and started exploring that in order to tell a new way, well, a new way of telling stories and um, put people inside right. my narratives, which is something, you know, that was really, really excited me. And, and how hard was it going from like, yeah. like a 2D medium to like oh. a completely, you know, yeah. surrounding, because uh, that, that's like a completely different way of, of 
Well, yeah. starting with an ID, drawing the ID, like you need to think about so many more things. Absolutely. I'm sure Absolutely. you had difficulties with that as well. Yeah, because I, cause I blended from um, like fine art portraiture into 3D. That transition really helped me understand perspective and space. So I could transition into the VR world a lot more easily. Um, but from if, if I didn't have any of that 3D experience, and I think I would have pretty struggled just because of the getting my head around there being more than one plane, you know, it, it, yeah, exactly. it's, it's a struggle. And I've seen a lot of artists like struggle with, you know, interpreting things like from loads of different angles, but they've yeah. never done that before. It's basically mm. like sculpture. It's like, um, I imagine sculptures would transition so yeah, well I, into I, VR. I, I, you know, I originally thought that that was maybe your background, that you were more like in sculpturing yeah. and then you went into VR because that would, would have been like a more like, I would say like logical it's a natural progression. progression. Yeah, because yeah. you from used a, to. From a 2D side yeah. to like the full 3d environment it's, it's so different yeah it is it is yeah so that so, that transition really helped there and alongside this you also worked as a, a 3d artist as, as in a dev studio right so you know yeah you've, you've been working on games um, yeah so, so fun so i really want to talk about the game working at the minute but sure it, i can't it's okay. <laughs> oh. yeah no way it's under wraps wait, wait, wait. is it <laughs> doom vr <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd that'd be hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> but but yeah, it's so exciting. I think we're it's like announcements coming really, really soon. So um, that's gonna be really cool. Can't wait to talk about that. What sort of games um, have you been involved in that have uh, shipped so far? Yeah, the last ship we did was um, Angry Birds Under Pressure 2 um, VR. <laughs> nice. And that was for PlayStation Social Screen. So it used okay. like the couch co-op, uh, one person in VR, everyone else with DualShocks, um, playing along, running the submarine. It's sort of like a very overcooked style gameplay. Lots of mayhem, mm -hmm. chaos. Typical Angry Birds sort of, you know, mm. comedy, piggies running around, slapping the bums, stuff like that. It was just really, really fun couch co-op tile to play with your family, really. Really cool. Yeah. And, and how how is like, because obviously, like, since, since COVID hit, like, a lot of dev studios are all sort of remote working now. So, you know, you, a lot yes. of people are working from home. How has that affected you, like, and your work? Were you always working remote or? No, no, I was in office. So I'm really missing the office buzz right now, you know. It's sort of got... I, yeah working from home was great at first like yeah cool i can just sit back in the chair <laughs> with pajamas you know it, it doesn't that was really cool but I, I really miss the buzz of talking to everyone in the studio and being alongside the, the coders and you know all the other mix of creatives that we have inside the studio i really miss that and yeah. that was really some so inspiring every day just coming into work and seeing everyone else working you know it, it was a really good buzz so i do miss that now the novelty has worn off working from home for sure so i can't wait to get back into the i'm office. really curious actually is there i mean i'm not very knee deep in the uh not even knee deep in the in the art scene but like in, in terms of this creative area is there are there any tools vr tools or otherwise that you use to kind of stay connected like i mean are you able to create in a space together when you're you know, working your, yeah. your dev job. Is there something that you use that isn't just, you know, Zoom calls and that? Or is, is there anything, you know, better than that? Well, yeah, to be honest, at the minute, we, we did that quite a lot, like Rec Room and, and stuff like that. A few of us just getting together, having to mess around and stuff. We didn't use it professionally. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, but recently we've just switched to playing Among Us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> works surprisingly time, well. So, yeah, yeah, that works surprisingly well. That's so, very accessible. You have so many platforms. something easy to, to put on. And a lot of us had connectivity issues sometimes when we, when we did stuff. And it's just like, oh, because a lot of us have different headsets. Um, we don't all have the, the, so we're having to use like, different platforms and stuff and sometimes we get you know uh, you know how it is yeah. but um but yeah mm. we did we did use it a lot to start off with but yeah not, not so much much in a minute it's more Back fun to traditional your calls for now to get yeah. like the work done just yeah that's the thing just getting that work done really is um came priority yeah yeah nice so going back to like the sort of artwork scene like um you know f for those that are not familiar with rosie's art it's kind of like it's art, but it's also a performance as well, right? Because yeah. you, a lot of this art stuff you do live in front of either yes. like a, a crowd or you record a video of it or whatever. How did that idea of like bringing the artwork and the performance of creating the artwork come together, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. So it was, when you paint in VR, I'm sure, you, I'm sure you've noticed yourself that you just sort of start moving with the paint. It, it sort of naturally brings this performative element out of you. And um, just mm. the, because it's so organic, you know, you're painting in air. So that sort of flow mm. um, means you can really play with that as well and, and move your body. It sort of becomes like an interpretive dance routine as you're creating some paint. 
And um, it does. Yeah, that, that's what really drew me. That's what made me realize that. Hang on a minute. This this could, this is this could be quite cool to actually do performances with and start painting. I, and, I, I and... do think that, not, that doesn't apply to everyone because I can't imagine Mike. <laughs> <laughs> no. I do a, do a painting and like dancing in front of it. It would be the I most beautiful like... stick man ever, and I'd yeah. dance around. Like, I think, It'd be I think amazing. you need to have some real skills too. <laughs> did, you, yeah. did, you, did you also try to do it in combination with like music? Oh my god, I was going to say about that actually. Yeah. And one of the most fun, best performances I've ever done was with a DJ, and mm. it was like a VJ session. So he was like jamming on the decks, nice. and I'm like, yeah, in the, in the headset. <laughs> so it was like a like a harmonizing the two and mm. it meant that i timed myself with the mm. beat drops as well so if i knew that the beat was going to go like whoa 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 then I'd, I'd, I'd sort of think right i'll just get this brush and start doing some you know dancing yeah. to it and then i'd time myself perfectly with the music and that was so in exhilarating all right we gotta stop right there because yeah. how does someone watch that back is that possible is this recorded somewhere how was uh, they like, well, what no, it was like on a stage it was a performance loads of people audience were there and what i was doing in the headset was being projected on the wall behind me oh, right. um so yeah everyone could see and um put two and two together i was like wow, painting this awesome. and the it would have been good to get some audio activity actually inside the headset as well yeah. which is something that i'm looking at for future events but um yeah that was that was so so cool and that seems neat. the first the first time i met rosie was when uh, she was at a uh, google uh space in london and i just finished yeah. like a vr uh 180 video course there yeah and you did this piece there where you were kind of it was almost like um, a self-portrait right of you painting something in vr but within vr <laughs> it was like rosy inception. inception it was yeah. so it was so cool and i think what, what was so great about it was and and you know this is kind of the magic of it it was like i was mesmerized by the performance as you were creating it so it wasn't just like the artwork in itself was a piece of artwork it was like the creation of the artwork was also artwork in itself this is <laughs> it is really amazing and i think you know zim's wow, been thanks. showing clips of you creating stuff um and it is very very That's impressive great. to watch Thank you. Yeah, um, that was that. I enjoyed doing that. That was so good. That was probably one of my favorite pieces and performances. Was that? Yeah, I think you've got it pinned on your Twitter yeah, page. Yeah, I've right? just not so taken it out. Check it out. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah, a great piece. It really is a great piece. I'm wondering. Um, so like, obviously, you know, go on. go on, Mike. You go ahead. I was just going to say, like, obviously, one of the biggest um, things that came out of this week was that, mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the tools that you predominantly use, which is like Google Tilt Brush um has has moved right it's like it's gone yes. from being owned and, and developed by google to them mm -hmm. turning into like an open source platform so anyone else can kind of take the reins and develop and change things um and i kind of want because oh you was obviously very excited about this i saw your your video <laughs> on Twitter. you were yeah. like oh my god i can't believe this is happening this is crazy yeah so maybe you can talk a little bit about why this is such a big thing especially for for someone in in, in your your sort of um Absolutely. your area of expertise yeah. um because like you know, it, it's 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 been developed and then it kind of stopped, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe you can talk about that and go from there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, Tuesday was such a huge day for me, like a massive roller coaster of emotions. Um, obviously, like a few, I think it was a few months ago now, we got the Polly news that that Polly was shutting down. Um, and if you saw my tweets then, I was like super negative. I was like, oh my god, what's going on? You know, Google no longer has the VR community's backs, and what's the alternative going to be? It was such a stress for me because uh, you know tilt brush is like one of my ugh, it's such a huge thing in my life and then mm -hmm. for all of a sudden i have to change how i deal with clients because a lot of what i do on poly is upload it send to clients for iteration they look at the file on the web because a lot of them don't have headsets you know it's not a common thing for the people i work with to have headsets themselves that's quite so rare. is poly like um, a viewer so of your models three, yeah it's a 3d hosting site for tilt brush right um, models. So it, I just send a link and the client can just look at it in a web browser and uh, even like the sketch and then view in the headset if they do have one. So it was a fantastic platform for me because it meant that I could efficiently share my art and clients could efficiently access it. So right. that is going, which I was like super stressed. I'm like, oh no, no, what we're going to do? There was no savior really because um, Sketchfab is great, but it doesn't have full brush support. Right. So nothing really would show my art exactly how you see it in the headset, which just means what's the point communicating with clients if they can't see exactly what they're going to get, you know? So, sure. um, yeah, that was a big worry. And that's when ICOSA was born. So, um, yeah, all the community came together and birthed ICOSA, which is basically, we're hoping to be a replacement to Poly. 
Mm. So it's right. um, yeah, going to be a web um, hoster for 3D touchbrush files, and um, hopefully going to be free. And yeah, just just made by the community for the community is sort of like our ethos there. Yeah. And um, but yeah. the issue is that was stopping the development for iCosta is we needed certain stuff from Google. We needed source files, access to certain things, which we didn't have. So we made a petition. <laughs> And um, I right. saw the petition. It was like it was vocalized on quite a few, um, you know, VR review sites and stuff. But um, it got like 3K votes within like a few weeks, which was really amazing and also surprising because VR art is also mm -hmm. it's quite niche mm -hmm. in an already quite niche community in a, in a grand scheme of sure. things. Um, so we were very surprised at that and. Um, but we were st are still sort of a bit worried about what Google's next move is going to be. You know, at any point they could just stop development and then not give us anything. So we could just be left like in limbo about what what's the future of this platform that a lot of our livelihood depends on. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. And this is why this is why Tuesday was so exciting. You know, because it was that relief. It was the best gift that Google could have actually given us this immortality to the, this tool. Um, that yeah, that we that we depend on, and we found out you know the Tubbush team really did have our backs all along to do something like this. Um, and I, I yeah. did see a lot of people like, why why are you so happy? You know this 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 tool is technically dead. You know it's um, just going to be loads of branch chaos. You know because it's open source now, um, and artists, mm -hmm. you know there's lots of programmers which won't work for free. Um, where you're going to find all the magic programmers stuff like that, um, but. <laughs> You know, we have every reason to be happy because we have faced lots of fear, lots of uncertainty about this this tool, which we love. But now we have security of Touchbrush's future. We now yep. know, um, you know, what, that it's, it's in good hands with this this fantastic community. And um, it's, it's exciting. You know, we can now like customize the shit out of it. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be we're going to like. <laughs> You know, just just keep looking after this fantastic tool. But it was a bit of a roller coaster as well because I was upset. You know, this is going to be the end of the Tilbush team, which an end of an era. You know, and um, it, it yeah. sort of brought brought to the forefront how much Tilbush, um, the effect Tilbush had on a lot of people. It was it, it was a fantastic mm. app that was a lot of people's first experiences in VR. So it's been from the get go deep rooted in our hearts, really, and. Um, that's why I think the community is like robust enough to um, come together and give Tiltbrush a life after Google. And um, yeah, the community's response has been amazing. We've already seen multiplayer versions of Tiltbrush. We've seen new brushes, customizable mm. brushes and stuff like that. Um, I think the community will definitely keep this magic alive. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you want to, if you want to get involved, awesome. then yeah, the Discord is um, discord.icosa.gallery if you, if you want to get involved. In Help out. And how do you spell Icosa? So I C O S A. Icosa. Mm. We called it that nice. because poly, nice. the and poly was... logo is a icosahedron, so it's um, <laughs> just using the same. Uh, how many sides nice. is that then? How, how many that, other sides? Oh, good question. I'm not good with my shape. <laughs> Icosahedron is that? That's the I shape. I think it's like, something like that. I, 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 yeah. I maybe 18 that. sides or something. Geez, someone's gonna yeah. know that. 12 is is what chance. <laughs> <are>, Rowdy's. <laughs> Raddy's furiously googling it now. Um, oh, no. with, with I, I, I already then, gave was, up when I heard the word. I was like, I don't know this. <laughs> <laughs> was Polly owned by Google as well then, or was it that was, owned by someone else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was owned by oh, Google. Okay. So when, okay. when the Polly news came out, I was sort of a bit like, does that mean it's the end of Tiltbrush and Tiltbrush is dead too? So that's when the, that's when I got like so yeah. worried and so worried. But now with this news, then it is. It's and this is this end, is you know? your livelihood. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. yeah. We depend on this for for our careers. A lot of our artists really do. So to find out that like, Google had our backs yeah. all along, it was like, oh my god, thank it's, you so it's, much, it's, guys. It's hard to imagine that. Like imagine people who usually edit videos, like Adobe says, like listen. Yeah. We're closing the door. We're not it's doing it anymore. That or, is basically or, or... the equivalent. Yeah. yeah, it is. Or in our it case, is. where it's like, uh, okay, we don't make any headsets anymore. <laughs> it's like, okay, now let's stop this podcast because there's nothing. That must have been crazy to be waiting yeah. for news like that. Dude, yeah, we could absolutely. surf on cardboard for a long time. I'm telling you. I'm telling you now. <laughs> like, there's sure. a lot of emotional backstory there, you know? So I, I did have a question, though, because when I think of Tilt yeah. Brush and having seen, like, it was, it was one of my wife's favorite things. She's an artist. And I, 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 I was really interesting uh, when, when, interested when the reactive 
um, I don't know what it's called, but the reactive brush for music integration mm. came out. And to me, that was like such a change from like, okay, static brushed environment to something's thumping and you can put a beat behind it and you can see the reaction almost like a live environment. Yeah. So I was going to ask you, like, what's your favorite change? What did that change do to your art? Uh, and is there something now that the door is kind of wide open that you want that doesn't exist yet? Yeah, that's that's really really good question, sir. Um, the biggest change for me that 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 was amazing was the um, the camera motion path tool. So this is amazing, not not just for like VR artists, it's just for video editing. Just being able to being it's the first like VR video video editing sort of situation I've been in where you can drag like a train track around and then adjust the curves like in VR space and have a camera just sort of coming in you just it's like Oof, so tangible yeah. that this camera is just like in your hands and you're moving around and it, it that that was amazing to experience that and, and start recording um you know like doing like zoom cool like pans and stuff like that inside vr space that that was pretty epic so that's one of my favorite updates for now yeah, that i'm control yeah yeah that sort of control that that, that really finger down to the mm -hmm. finger control which is amazing and um yeah, and one thing I'm excited about now is is customizable palettes. So being able to like set my palette up for different sort of, so if I'm doing a, a performance, I'll set up my performance palette. If I'm doing a certain piece, I can have a different palette set aside of colors and stuff like that. I'm looking forward to that sort of level of customization, new brushes, and um, yeah, I'm very excited where the community is going to take this. So right now, I mean, for people who are have never been into Tilt Brush, you have that kind of, I don't know how we call it, like a reticulating spline. Like you've got the four panels around your arm uh, and that's the palette you yes. use with the different sizes, colors, interactive tools. Um, yeah. I didn't know this, but that's fixed right now. Like it, you, you can't modify it. Um, there's no customization um, features or no, is there some? All you can do is drag panels out and like, pop them in the world around you or like shuffle them around on the palette only. But you cannot grab like a brush and move that brush there, move that brush there, grab that color, put that put, put that color there. You cannot make a customizable panel. Um, so for performance and stuff, what I usually do is make a panel in the world and like paint it and stuff like that and use on the color swabs. But then like when I move around the world, that moves somewhere else as well. So it's not mm. like integral to the palette, which would be super, super handy. Oh, makes sense. Yeah, we so, had a couple so of questions if, from uh, the chat as well. Uh, okay. We had yeah, uh, Abster awesome. asking, what are Rosie's thoughts on Quill? Quill, hmm. yes, love Quill. Um, Quill is basically like a Photoshop version um, of VR art. You know, it's got everything there. You can animate, shade and, and stuff like that. Um, doesn't have I don't think it has lighting options unless there's an update um, soon that has like real world lighting because a lot of the paint is unlit it's not shaded um, it depends on you painting the shading in yourself which is you know super cool as well um, right. yeah one of the things that um, stops me using Quill as much as Tilt Brush is just how nice it is to, to work in it's not that great it's a little bit you know like the UI is a bit blocky and stuff and yeah. mm -hmm. VR what was so important for me with VR is being happy in the space that I'm in and and getting good vibes from it and just having fun jamming in there. And I just don't feel like I'm having so much fun in Quill. It's like I'm just on Photoshop, which is <laughs> it's never really that fun. Uh, but Tilt Brush yeah. is just so fun. I, I just love it. The brushes that make nice noises and it's just, to be honest, I think I'm just a child. Um, <laughs> that's what it comes down to. I'm just a three-year-old with a headset on. That, that is, yeah. I like pretty nice. But you're totally right. Like if, yeah. if, if you're happy in your working environment, you're gonna you're gonna get the Perfect, best out yeah. of you in terms of yeah. your creativity yeah. as well. So it Hands totally down. makes sense. Hands yeah, down. and and it's interesting because since it's become open source, which is only like this week, right? We've already oh, yeah. seen like a, a side quest spin-off uh, mm -hmm. of of Tilt Brush. Um, uh, which is pretty interesting. Is there any yeah. tools in that that are different from the main version, or is it like literally a, 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 an exact copy? Um, I th I'm not 100% sure if it's got the experimental brushes activated. I think it does. I'm not sure. But yeah, so mm. what we've got from the open source is a whole bunch of brushes that Tilt Brush were like, I won't, uh, like, nah, no, no point releasing that just yet. Or like, they wanted to do my testing on it before they released it. And these are called the experimental brushes. Right. So they're mm. like a whole bunch of brushes that us artists have never seen before. So it was just like gold dust when we saw them. Like, right. oh, wow, I can make bubbles and I can make like orbs and stuff. So that that was really exciting. And a lot of the artists at the minute have just been jumping in and, and crashing everything, just by, <laughs> just <laughs> filling a scene full of experimental brushes because hmm. um, it's just been that exciting for us. So that that is the um, 
yeah, the biggest difference from the open source. So just if touched... people want to try Tilt Brush, where can they uh, like play it, download um, it? Yeah, so obviously you've got the normal version on everything, yeah. like Steam, Oculus and all that stuff, even on Quest. But yeah. the open source version, like if, if you, you know, into Git and stuff, you can um, branch off our fork and have a go and um, keep up to date with what we're yeah. doing. We're recently pushing a Quest build of the fork that we've got, which includes like mm. the experimental brushes and it's a tad more stable than what it was before. Um, yeah. But yes, yeah, it's going to be a slow process of like iterations and iterations mm. and iterations, just playing with what we can do to customize this. Mm. Yeah, cool. It's amazing that the community are going to be pushing it forward. You yeah, know, really um, out of this, what are you most excited about for the future of, um, of of this medium? Then, yeah, well, mostly I'm excited about the well, the community. What what they're going to do with keeping it alive, the multiplayer aspect. That's something I'm really excited about. Is yeah. like painting with with people in touch. Yeah. That is something I've wanted that, for that, ages. That would make an amazing performance as well, right? Hell yeah. Doing something yeah. together, because like there's there's plenty of other people in the space, isn't there? Like that you can collaborate with and Absolutely. do something really unique with. That would be really interesting as well. Yeah. So and, that, that's a good thing, a big thing that I'm looking forward to. Exactly. That, that was actually I, one of my. Do you think that uh, that moving scenes will be something that is going to be coming as well, like animations? Hmm. Yes. Uh. Yeah. I'd love for animation to be in Tilt Brush. Uh, that'd be that'd be great. Cause I know Quill has like really advanced uh -huh. animation, yeah. animation timeline and mm. editability is like really great in Quill. So it'd be great to get that level in Tilt Brush. Maybe now it's open source. We can yeah. have that. So and I was if, wondering if, if the technical have... restraints were like at the moment you have a certain amount that you can create. Is it? Uh, my understanding is it's not infinite. Like you can't create an um, infinite scene at the moment, or is that? changed I've in the never... years since I've been back. You're right. It is, it's, you get to a certain level where your complete, computer will just blow up, um, basically, because it is really expensive <laughs> working in, in Tilbrush. Mm. But the um, on Quest, there's, there's quite a low limit, given it being mobile. But on PC, you can go pretty... I've never hit a barrier yet. I know some people that I know have hit the barrier, where they've just been overloaded, overloaded the scenes with, like, alpha channel, alpha planes and stuff like that, and that's just made it go whoop. But um, oh. yeah, you can you know which brushes that are the most expensive, so you can work around it in that way as well. Um, so that's what I tend to do a lot more often now, just so I don't hit that limit. But man, I very rarely, and I've made some big ass sketches, and I've, oh. I very rarely hit that 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 limit. So um, I do wonder if you like you mentioned dabbling in Rec Room before with colleagues and stuff. Yeah. Rec Room seems to be taken off like a rocket ship uh, when it comes to creation. Uh, have you ever considered uh, doing something in that a little, or have you, you know, yeah, created art no. in that and kind of sold art in that or anything like that? Yeah, the social side of, of VR is something that I want to get more into, definitely. And, and VR chat as well. There's so much customizability, I can't remember the word, um, that you can do there. That's really exciting. Um, and I know a lot of artists are going into that now and doing like galleries and um, shows and stuff like that in, in VR chat. So I really want to get into more of that side of things. Just yeah. at the minute, I, I haven't, unfortunately, that much just because I've, I've been focusing on tons of other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I really do hope to very soon. Yeah, mm -hmm. cool. Awesome. And if people want to check out some of your artwork, um, what's the best place to go? Because you've got, you got artwork pretty much all over the place. You've got an, uh, you've got an <laughs> yeah. app on SideQuest. Instagram. You're, yeah. you're, you're featured yeah. in the Museum of Realities, which is available yeah. on Steam. Where else can people check out your stuff? Yeah, so mainly Twitter is what I spend most of my time on at the minute, far too mm -hmm. much. Um, but yeah, YouTube, um, yeah, VR underscore Rosie is mainly where you'll find me across all the social media, like Instagram as well. Apart from that's going to the underscore on the end because awkward. And um, yeah, yeah, just um, any social media, just look for VR Rosie and, and you'll find me there. And are you open for hire at the moment in terms of like big projects? Um, I've got loads of projects at the minute. I'm pretty busy, but um, definitely the next couple of months, things will be winding down. So yeah, get in touch. Very cool. Mm, very cool. Very Thank nice. you very much. It was yeah, really yeah. interesting to get an insight into something that, you know, yeah. the, we know very little about, you know, we know obviously of, of Tilt Brush, but we don't really understand the, the, the impact of it going open source uh, has. And yeah. it's really interesting and, and exciting for you as well, you know, that this is going to be in the hands of the community going forward and is going to give you the tools that you need to let your career go even further. And I'm sure it will Absolutely. because you're very, very talented. So thank you very much for thank being you. on the show, Rosie. I really, thank really appreciate so it. A big thank you to the Tilt Brush team as well. So. 
Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so now let's hand it over to Zim then, uh, because uh, we've got some stuff to look forward to maybe next week. I don't even know what he's got up his sleeve this week, so I hope so. Let's find this is out. not a good sign. Like. It's always, this is always the case. I get, make you guys nervous. I know it's it's fine. So Nathie already mentioned one, which I think someone in chat has been playing, uh, which is Jupiter Grad. Which is something that I had specifically when I saw it on PC a couple of uh, a couple of months ago when they released initially, I kind of skipped. Uh, so this one I've, I've I've wanted to wait until it came out, and I think Quest is actually a great platform for it. So on the 28th of January um, on Quest, Jupiter Grad, spelled with a with a Y, um, has landed for fifteen dollars and about twelve pounds. This is from Game Dust, and it's a how do I describe this? A cosmonaut acrobatics. Elasticated plunger game, if uh, you can imagine what that is. Think about cell shaded windlands in tubes in space, uh, with some jamming, uh, some <laughs> some some jamming Russian beats behind it. That's Jupiter Grad, I think, in a nutshell. So, um, high initials. It's like a bit of a niche. <laughs> it's, it's a it, it's a very niche game, and I think y you're gonna want VR legs for this game. It's high inertia. Um, it's an environmental puzzler. You're flying around with suction cup arms. Um, but as Pigosh, uh, a commenter and reviewer on Oculus Home said, Spidey doesn't hesitate and neither should you. So go, go straight at it. Fly into this. If you're brand new, maybe skip this one. And if like me, you're jaded because of a bad T-Rex experience in Cell Shaded, maybe give another Cell Shaded game a chance mm. and give Jupiter Grad a go. I like it. Yeah, exactly. Are you going to be streaming this this week? I, I'm very tempted to do this soon. Uh, and it the one thing I can't show you on the podcast, I'm afraid, or demonstrate, is the music. The music is Slavic. It's awesome. And I think if there's anything that incentivizes me to play this game, it is that. And they've even got in the trailer a clip, uh, a little, a little um, review uh, statement from Life of Boris. If anyone knows Life of Boris, if you don't know Life of Boris, go check Life of Boris on YouTube for a bit of uh, a taste of Slavic life. That is an amazing YouTube channel, um, and it will teach you things that you wish you never knew. Yeah. I think yeah. this is one that I'd rather watch you play than me play myself. So <laughs> that's why. I that's why you're asking. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I look forward to it. it. Honestly, it looks like it. It looks like you took Russia and intercepted it with like a descent game, mm. and then put it in VR with suction cup hands. It's windlands. This kind of give me windlands vibes. Right. I love windlands. windlands. But then so. take out the guns. But then take yeah. out the yeah. guns. It's 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 weird. And there's a time attack mode and stuff. So there's some extensibility to the game. But from all from all the reviews that I've heard, it's kind of sh short and sweet and mm -hmm. tough on your tummy. So if you are new to yeah. VR, give you but a grad a skip. If this if this game can come to Quest, then Windlands can also come to Quest. Mm, yes. Uh, I hope one day we'll see Windlands on Quest. I think that would be a beautiful marriage. I've actually played yes. Windlands and on quest so i know it's possible <laughs> all right so uh next up this is another bizarro game um this one's very strange it's 1976 back to midway this is a game that like some others that we've seen before marries uh, an original kind of 2d style gameplay with vrification so this is very much a a, a dogfight kind of top-down scroller bullet hell shooter game with uh, segues into an immersion zone is what they call it. The dev studio here, Ivanovich Games, um, have done this in their previous title, which some of you might have might have played. Um, and that one was, what was that called again? That was called um, Operation Warcade. Have any of you mm -hmm. played that? It was like a, it was yeah, like a, it was a classic, a, 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 like an arcade cabinet, and then you mm -hmm. went into the scene. This is a bit like that. So you're flying planes, like the B-17G Flying Fortress, uh, the Lockheed P-38, and um, it's got a bizarre name, 1976, which is strange because the game is set in 1943. Um, apparently, <laughs> there's been some. I'm not even gonna go into their story. The story is just. Totally, dis I can disregard the story. It, it doesn't matter. It's basically time travel, Nazis, strange things happened, and all of a sudden oh. you're able to play a top-down scrolly shooter. There haven't been many games like this. Um, there really haven't. I think I played one from, oh God, no, uh, the 
the devs uh, Arvor Arvor had a uh, a game that was like oh. inspired by I yeah. want to say like manga or Japanese uh, art. It was really it was good. Still working on that actually. Do you know the name of it? The one I'm talking about. It was like Kuma or Kumi or like something short like that. Kumi Kuma. Yumi Kumi, something like that. It was really something quite like good. That. But it that was, cool. was that was that was more. There was another Oculus Home game like this where you were holding a plane um, and and shooting in an environment. Uh, Vive the, uh, the Valve lab, had right? it. Yeah. 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 Valve had it in the, in, yeah. in the lab, for example, something like this. So. It does- Kind of sound like they they launched the title and then they were like oh we did update the title right the, the title of the game we changed it to, to the right date so yeah 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 it's like, bizarre that date that date conflict is just strange but to me i used to love side scrollers top down scrollers like that same. was my yeah. deal i fucking love bullet hells um watching this makes me want there's a game that's a 3d game on steam uh which is from an indie studio called tower of guns it's not a vr game sadly but I want that game in VR. So uh, I hope that studio will listen out. This one looks like a, a kind of a strange dichotomy of, of experiences. It's an eclectic mix of 2D and VR gameplay. I hope the two don't detract from one another, um, but I am definitely going to try that one as well because I think that's going to be an interesting mix. I don't think we've really nailed like it the yet. Way that, you know, it's, it's kind of like a top-down shooter, but the planes are coming like past your head down into the screen and then back out. And that yeah. that three D effect obviously doesn't That's translate right. very well in the trailer, but I'm sure it looks awesome in VR. So yeah, yeah I, I want to try this one out as well. Yeah, exactly. It's one of those things that oh, yeah, can give uh, you that feel. What were we saying? Sampler nineteen uh, said it was Shooty Skies Overdrive is the one that you're talking about the with the plane. Shooty Skies Overdrive. Hand. That one. See, and also, see, according to uh, Paradise Decay, there is a free demo of the game on SideQuest. There yes. is actually there's a free demo of the game on Steam as well. I oh, missed nice. that in my notes. Thank you very much, PD. Uh, so side quest and Steam for a free demo to try it out. That makes a lot of sense, especially because like the last game, this landed on the 28th, and again is 15 bucks, so 12 pounds. Mm. Um, so there you go. Both of those landed on the 28th. Third game landed on the 28th, which I'll mention and I'll just flash for you because if I didn't, then you know. Mike it hit me or something. Gorn landed on Quest. It's got a giant crab. Go play it if you like violence. Because my God, <laughs> that's the game for you if you like violence. Sorry, Rosie. Close the eyes. Crabs. <laughs> I'll just be here just watering my. Well, pants. I mean, you you can paint with the blood in the game, so that's, that's something. <laughs> my God, oh. Proudy. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it is a performance as well in some way. A ballet like, of violence. Yeah. Ballet, ballet of violence. Of blood and violence. I like it. <laughs> I do, I do like Gorn. You know, I had a lot of fun with it this week, but um, it is just, it is Gorn. It is just what we know and love from three years ago. You but know, it nothing's doesn't changed. Feel dated in any way, or does it? Uh, it doesn't feel dated, but just like the original game, it's fun as hell, but it does get repetitive, uh, and you kind okay. of like, you're a bit like done after a little while. But the boss fights are pretty epic, and unlocking all the weapons and having fun in the custom modes is fun as well. But just know that going in, uh, you know, and just be careful. <laughs> Like yes. we've reiterated you, many you times. You don't have Just a tether. Careful. You don't have a tether. It's not going to send in your play space. Don't punch a wall, right? Yeah. I mean... I, I'm just waiting for the newsreel to come in about people who punch a wall. Um, there's two other little uh, tidbits I'll just mention. So Population 1, we didn't talk about it, but some of us have played it, uh, has a 9v9 war mode that has been dropped uh, and a night map version of the course. The ice is now gone, thank God. But I'm sorry, it's not all hymns and prayers. They've replaced the ice with just shite all over the place. So the plains now, where they were nice, clean, green grass plains, are just, they just turned the ice into dirt. I, I don't know, maybe it was easy for them not to push an update or something. It's fucking weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the 9v9 is also a little bit of a disappointment because initially I thought, hey, we can get nine of our friends together. You can't. It's still a maximum of three players you can glue together. You join a game. And then you're in a crazy ass voice lobby with nine people all talking over each other, uh, which doesn't work that well. And then you end up in a in, wait, in wait. some kind of a stomping match. Wait, nine wait, versus so, okay, nine. So, wait, wait. So is, you have like different squads, but you can hear each other. Yeah. So you can you basically then, are a single glued together squad yeah, of yeah, yeah. nine, but you can in the friend system only arrange you and two other buddies. 
to get together to queue threes. up for a 9v9, yeah, okay. and then you get added. So it's but basically voice, three groups of three glued together. The voice the thing is all open. So it's like playing all open squats, and it's like you can hear every squat that is playing. I have, yeah. To be honest, I'm okay. happy, though, that, that you can hear everyone, and you can communicate with everyone rather okay. than just your squad, because I think, you know, it, it's a lot faster paced, actually. That was one thing I was really surprised about with the war mode, that, you know, it's you, yeah. your team versus another team, and that's it. But you, you know, communication between all the teammates is key to survival because, like, if you get straggles, straggaways that are like running off in the distance, they're gonna get wiped out. And then if you're up against like a team of nine and you're a team of six, then you are pretty, pretty screwed unless you're good. There are. So um, good, I am happy yeah, that there is cross. <laughs> Cross voice chat. I think it's a fun. I, I think what they should do for I that, am. if I was to tweak it, I would start with um, probably everyone by default muted that it wasn't in your team. So what I mean is that you ha you you have to kind of enable uh, an open because when you start in, it's just nine people talking over each other, and that's, I agree with you that the coordination is necessary. And I don't know if there's a bet like if you if you turn everyone off, you're gonna have problems com communicating, or it's gonna be cumbersome. You have everyone on, yep. it's difficult because you've got two people who just want to talk to each other and they're flooding the voice comms. Nine players in an open voice chat is not, that's not a very I find it a very thing. strange push because, I mean, I was expecting them to go more for the, you know, the the solo or the the, the smaller squads, maybe like two people in a squad. That's but weird. instead they go a direction that, they're, they're... yeah, I don't know. I'm that's just strange. waiting There's for only one thing I'll say. 21. If 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 you're if you're playing music whilst playing Population One, there is a special place in hell for you, my friend. Well, that's in every <laughs> VR game. That. Like there, there are people doing it in every game. It's it's so annoying. Or but that's exactly going around. That's exactly yeah. the problem yeah. that I had because you either yeah. had noisy participants who weren't in VR, but you could hear secondary people in the room with them, or like a television was on, yeah. or something like that. So or the it, heavy yeah. breathers, like. <sighs> Yeah, so oh, it's I'm just it's such a it's such a dice roll. But look, it's it's weird. Go try it out. The night map is pretty cool. It's nicely lit. It's not as dark as I was expecting it to be. It's just kind of like a gray shaded version of the map with some lighting. Um, not much really new there in terms of gameplay. But if you've wanted a reason to go back, then Pop One has it for you. Okay. Um, no sign of solo yet, as per what Nathan was saying. I, I think they so, but really let need. Let me guess. That. They did. They did roll out some new skins. Oh, oh they know did. It. You, you know, know it. Did. There are some new oh, skins, yeah. all right. How much? <laughs> I, don't, I have no idea. Price. I don't even look anymore. How much? Yeah. One million dollar? It's like, like a vampire that. one. So speaking vampire. of vampires, I give you the last bit. I promised you at the start that I would show off the fox hunts and walkabout mini golf. For those of you who missed my intro, yes. I got really interested in this wrist-based uh, clue system that is now in there in all the hard maps, only the hard maps, the night maps in walkabout mini golf which has these clues that you solve. And if you solve the clues in the level, you unlock feckin' awesome putters, right? These putters look really cool uh, and you can use them in multiplayer. And that is just, it just totally dragged me back into the game. I got one of them and now I can show off in front of these two lads when I play with them next, you know? This, 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 this game of the year, game of the year. Walk about mini golf, that's it. So quick recap, Jupiter grad, 1976 back to midway that second one's a pc vr game first one's a quest title gorn pop one update and walkabout mini golf update there you go that's our week nice. for releases nice. awesome i've got one more thing i want to mention actually and that is that i expect you to die 2 was announced this week um yeah, which is awesome because i really love the first game we don't have a release date just yet but obviously we'll keep you pushed on that but if you like expect you to die and you like Best those kind of room escape games in a game does this mean we yeah. also get what a bears 2 no, Maybe. from yeah. Shell Games. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't, think, I don't so. think so. No, yeah. Thank sadly God. not. No, no. Yeah, uh, no. but yeah, that is uh, the show this week. So I'll quickly reiterate the show times. Maybe we'll take a couple of questions. Should we do that? We haven't done that in a little while. So yeah, if you've go got for a question him. that's sort of burning a hole in your heart, then please let us know in the chat now. It could be for any of us, including Rosie as well. So okay. chuck them in the chat. Uh, just a reminder, this is a weekly VR, AR, and MR talk show live streamed every Saturday on YouTube and on Twitch. The show goes live at 7 p.m. in Europe, 6 p.m. in the UK, and 12 midday in Central US. You can also check out the audio version, which is available on iTunes, SoundCloud, and on Spotify. If you've enjoyed the live show on YouTube, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for all our future shows. And uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you again to Rosie for joining us live. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you yeah. so much, guys. Honestly, yeah. it's been so good. Thank I love you. the chat just really said, 
a mini golf course designed by <laughs> designed Rosie by Summers me. would be good. <laughs> I agree. Collaboration. That. That's yeah. true. Please do it. <laughs> All right. Any any questions here? Someone said, have you tried Gravity Sketch? Oh, Gravity Sketch went uh, free as well on Quest. So yes. for those who haven't tried it, I haven't actually played around with Gravity Sketch. What have you, uh, Rosie? I assume you have. I've but... done a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Not not major stuff, but um, I definitely will be hopping into it now. Who's but, it for? Yes. Like, what is it? What would you say is its, it's, it's best application? Sculpturing mainly. So yeah, like people that are doing a lot more 3D modeling sort of side of things, whereas mm -hmm. I do 3D painting mainly. Yeah. Um, but I do really want to branch into the modeling stuff. I, obviously, I do it day to day at work. So, um, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Cool. There's cool another stuff. question from Burrito, uh, and they ask uh, for Rosie, uh, what do you think about the rumored Apple VR headset? Do you think it would be nice for pros like yourself, like creatives as, as Macs are kind of like, you know, kind of tool yeah, of choice for pros. Top end, isn't it really? Mm. Um, it would be good to have such a... <laughs> <laughs> that sort Not of... to Rowdy. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm interested in where this will take the Apple ecosystem as well, like um, the options of leading with, with Macs and stuff, I, I don't know. But um, mm. but yeah, it's interesting. I, I don't really have an opinion just yet. I want to hear more info. I mentioned yeah, sure. a lot more about what, you know, what, what it's going to be, what, what is it? Yeah, I'm, th I'm guessing more AR based, given the whole lidar sort of. Um, yeah. Quite possibly, yeah, them. yeah. It's going to be interesting. I think the more the merrier. You know, yeah, the more absolutely. tools we've got access to, the better, really. Oh, there's yeah. another good uh, question here. Someone's asking, basically, uh, did Rosie ever uh, tinker around with Dreams? Obviously, you, you shipped oh a game gosh. for PSVR. Well, how's, how, have yeah. you done anything in Dreams? Did you make a breakfast or a scene or something? What are you doing there? This is this is like so frustrating. So I've got a PSVR. Um, and then I moved house and then no longer had access to my PlayStation. So I was like, okay, it's fine. Let's get a PS5. Didn't pre-order. So now I'm in that. Well, I'm now one of them people that just cannot get the elusive PS5. Like, where the hell are they? They just sell out in two seconds because of scalpers. And I just yeah. cannot get a PS5. So yeah. <laughs> I'm itching to get my hands on this PS5. And then I'll finally be able to get into dreams. And amazing. I'm so looking forward to it because the, the stuff that you can do is just amazing. Mm. And... Yeah, I'm really looking forward to finally getting my hands on that once I get a PS5. All right. Have you ordered your adapter yet? Your camera adapter? I've got the adapter. Yeah, I've got oh, everything well apart from the PS5. Yeah. I've even got a space yeah. to put it. I've even cleared out a whole place just to put the massive thing. And I don't and have it. In Dreams, you can play Nathie's favorite VR game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Siren Head VR. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just God, what I like... wanted. Yeah. <laughs> A hint of sarcasm that I, that I heard there. Um, any other questions? Let's see. Um, this is a question for Nathan. This is a random question. Oh, Obviously, no. someone knows you're a Rocket no. League aficionado. Yeah, okay. Do you have a favorite Rocket League pro? <laughs> what? A, what, are they, what? A pro? I suppose yeah, a player, like, like a, a pro, pro player. A pro player. That's what I would. I would. I do, you, do you aspire to be? Up to? <laughs> I don't even. I, I don't watch it like professionally. So like a, a ninja of Rocket League. Ninja of Rocket League, no. but I don't watch a Rocket League profession. I just play it. You are you a are professional, one. that's what you're saying. I am the I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Nice question, though, but uh, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, we'll take one last one, then. Uh, from Traveling Man, uh, do you have access to the Horizon beta, Rosie? Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts uh, on Horizon, actually? I don't have access to it, no. no. Nobody has access. Nobody in Europe, no. right? So. No. <laughs> I know some people that do. I'm sorry to but... it actually no. exists. No, no I think they've, uh... they've been bought by Facebook to spread mm. that information. Oh, I don't believe it anymore. <laughs> yeah. But it's kind of an interesting platform as well, right? Because you can kind of be creative yeah. in there and do your you own can. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting if you have time, access definitely. to it, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, sadly no. Okay, well, that was the show uh, this week. We'll obviously be back on next week's show with more VR news. But until then, take care of yourselves. Have a good week yep. in VR. And bye-bye for now. Bye. 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 Bye